Verses 1 to 38 of The Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 1 to 38. Anonymous old French epic dating perhaps as early as the middle eleventh century. Charles the King, our Lord and Sovereign, full seven years hath sojourned in Spain, conquered the land and won the western main. Now no fortress against him doth remain, no city walls are left for him to gain, save Saragusse that sits on high mountain, Marseille its king, who feareth not God's name, Mahomet's man, he invokes Apollon's aid, nor wards off ills that shall to him attain. King Marsilies he lay at Saragusse, went he his way into an orchard cool. There on a throne he sate, of marble blue. Round him his men, full twenty thousand stood. Called he forth then his counts, also his dukes. My lords, give ear to our impending doom, that Emperor Charles of France the Deuce, into this land is come, us to confuse. I have no host in battle him to prove, nor have I strength his forces to undo. Counsel me, then, ye that are wise and true, can ye ward off this present death and duel? What were to say no pagan of them knew, save Blancondrin of the castle of Valfound? Blancondrin was a pagan very wise, in vassalage he was a gallant knight. First in prowess he stood his lord beside. And thus he spoke. Do not yourself affright. Yield to Kalun that is so big with pride. Faithful service, his friend and his ally. Lions and bears and hounds for him provide. Thousand mewed hawks, seven hundred camelry. Silver and gold, four hundred mules load high. Fifty wagons his rights will need supply, To with that wealth he pays his soldiery. War hath he waged in Spain too long a time, To Aix in France, homeward he will him hie. Follow him there before St. Michael's tide, You shall receive and hold the Christian right, Stand honour bound and do him fealty, Send hostages should he demand surety, Ten or a score our loyal oath to bind. Send him our sons, the firstborn of our wives, And he be slain, I'll surely furnish mine. Better by far they go, though doomed to die, Than that we lose honour and dignity, And be ourselves brought down to beggary. Says Blancondrines, By my right hand I say, And by this beard that in the wind doth sway, The Frankish host you'll see them all away. Franks will retire to France, their own terrain. When they are gone, to each his fair domain. In his chapelle at Aix will Charles stay. High festival will hold for St. Michael. Time will go by and pass the appointed day. Tidings of us no Frank will hear or say. Proud is that king, and cruel his courage. From the hostage he'll slice their heads away. Better by far their heads be shorn away than that ourselves lose this clear land of Spain, than that ourselves do suffer grief and pain. That is well said, so be it, the pagans say. The council ends, and that King Marsili calleth aside Clarun of Balegi, Astramarin and Eudropin his peer, and Priamun and Gualun of the beard, and Machina and his uncle Mahi, with Jono, Malbian from oversea, and Blancondrin, good reason to decree. Ten hath he called, were first in felony. Gentle barons, to Charlemagne go ye, he is in siege of Cordris the city. In your right hands bear olive branches green, which signify peace and humility. If you by craft contrive to set me free, silver and gold you'll have your fill of me. Manners and fiefs, I'll give you all your need. We have enough, the pagans straight agree. 
King Masilis, his counsel finishing, says to his men, Go now, my lords, to him, olive branches in your right hands bearing. Bid ye for me that shall amain the king, in his God's name to show me his mercy. Ere this new moon wanes, I shall be with him. One thousand men shall be my following. I will receive the right of christening. Will be his man, my love and faith swearing. Hostages, too, he'll have, if so he will. Says Blancondrines, much good will come of this. Ten snow-white mules then ordered Masili, gifts of a king, the king of Swatili, bridled with gold, saddled in silver clear, mounted them those that should the message speak. In their right hands were olive branches green. Came they to Charles, that holds all France in fee yet cannot guard himself from treachery. Merry and bold is now that emperor. Cordres he holds, the walls are tumbled down. His catapults have battered town and tower. Great good treasure his knights have placed in pound, silver and gold and many a jewelled gown. In that city there is no pagan now, but he being slain or takes the Christian vow. The emperor is in a great orchard ground, where Oliver and Roland stands around. Sanson the duke, and Anse the proud, Geoffrey d'Anjou, that bears his gonfalon. There too Gerin and Gerier are found. Where they are found is seen a mighty crowd. Fifteen thousand come out of France the deuce. On white carpets those knights have sate them down, at the game-boards to pass an idle hour. Checkers the old, for wisdom most renowned, while fence the young and lusty bachelors. Beneath a pine in Eglantine embowed stands a fold-stool fashioned of gold throughout. There sits the king that holds douce France in power. White is his beard, and blossoming white his crown. Shapely his limbs, his countenance is proud. Should any seek, no need to point him out. The messengers, on foot they get them down, and in salute, full courteously, they lout. The foremost word of all Blancondrine spake, and to the king, May God preserve you safe, the all-glorious to whom ye have bound to pray. Proud Marsilies, this message bids me say, Much hath he sought to find salvation's way. Out of his wealth meet presents would he make, Lions and bears and greyhounds leashed on chain, Thousand mewed hawks, seven hundred dromedaries, Four hundred mules his silver shall convey, Fifty wagons you'll need to bear away, Golden besants, such store of proved assay, Where with full tale your soldiers you can pay. Now in this land you've been too long a day, Hie you to France, return again to Aix. Thus saith my lord, He'll follow too that way. That emperor towards God his arms he raised, Lowered his head, began to meditate. That emperor inclined his head full low, Hasty in speech he never was, but slow. His custom was, at his leisure he spoke, When he looks up his face is very bold. He says to them, Good tidings have you told, King Marsilis hath ever been my foe. These very words you have before me told, in what measure of faith am I to hold? That Sarrazin says, Hostages he'll show, ten shall you take, or fifteen or a score, though he be slain, a son of mine shall go. Any there be, you'll have more nobly born, to your palace seigneurial when you go. At Michael's feast, called in periculo. My lord hath said, Thither will he follow, even to your baths, that God for you hath wrought. There is he fain the Christian faith to know. Answers him Charles, Still may he heal his soul. Clear shone the sun in a fair eventide. Those ten men's mules in stall he bade them tie. Also a tent in the orchard raise on high, those messengers had lodging for the night. Dozen sergeants served after them aright. 
darkling they lie till comes the clear daylight. That emperor does with the morning rise, matins and mass are said then in his sight. Forth goes that king, and stays beneath a pine. Barons he calls, good counsel to define, for with his franks he's ever of a mind. That emperor beneath a pine he sits, calls his barons his counsel to begin. Oger the duke, that archbishop Turpin, Richard the old, and his nephew Henry, from Gascony the proof Count Acolin, Tedbold of Reims and Milun his cousin. With him there were Geras and also Gerin, and among them the Count Rolant came in, and Oliver, so proof and so gentle. Franks out of France, a thousand chivalry. Guaines came there, that wrought the treachery. The council then began, which ended ill. My lord's barons, says the emperor then, Charles, King Marsilies hath sent me his messages. Out of his wealth he'll give me weighty masses, greyhounds on leash, and bears and lions also, thousand mewed hawks and seven hundred camels, Four hundred mules with gold Arabian charged, Fifty wagons, yea, more than fifty drawing. But into France demands he my departure. He'll follow me to Aix, where is my castle. There he'll receive the law of our salvation. Christian he'll be, and hold from me his marches. But I know not what purpose in his heart is. Then say the Franks, This seems us act with caution. That emperor hath ended now his speech. The Count Rolands he never will agree. Quick to reply, he springs upon his feet, and to the king. Believe not, Marsili, seven years since, when into Spain came we, I conquered you nobles, also Comeblis, and took Valterne, and all the land of Pine, and Balaguet, and Tuel, and Cezili. Traitor in all his ways was Marsili. Of his pagans he sent you then fifteen, bearing in hand their olive branches green, who even as now these very words did speak. You of your franks a council did decree, praise they that your words that foolish were indeed. Two of your counts did to the pagan speed, Besan was one and the other Basili, their heads he took on the hill by Haltili. War have you waged, so on to war proceed, to Saragus lead forth your great army. All your life long, if need be, lie in siege, Vengeance for those the felon slew to wreak. That emperor, he sits with lowering front, He clasps his chin, his beard his fingers tug, Good word nor bad, his nephew not one. Franks hold their peace, but only Granolun Springs to his feet, and comes before Kalun. Right haughtily his reason he's begun, and to the king. Believe not any one, my word, nor theirs, save whence your good shall come. Since he sends word, that king Marsilion, homage he'll do by finger and by thumb. Throughout all Spain your writ alone shall run, next he'll receive our rule of Christendom. Who shall advise this bidding be not done, deserves not death, since all to death must come. Counsel of pride is wrong. We fought enough. Leave we the fools, and with the wise be one. And after him came Nemes out the third. Better vassal there was not in the world, and to the king. Now rightly have you heard Gawain the count, what answer he returned. Wisdom was there, but let it well be heard. King Marsilies in war is overturned, His castles all in ruin have you hurled, With catapults his ramparts have you burst, Vanquished his men, and all his cities burned, Him who entreats your pity do not spurn, Sinners were they that would to war return, With hostages his faith he would secure, Let this great war no longer now endure. Well said the duke, Franks utter in their turn, my lord's baron, say whom shall we send up, to Saragus, to King Marsilion? Answers Duke Nemes, I'll go there for your love, give me therefore the wand, also the glove. 
answers the king, Old man of wisdom, prof, by this white beard, and as these cheeks are rough, you'll not this year so far from me remove. Go sit you down, for none hath called you up. My lord's barons, say whom now can we send to the Saracen that Saragoose defends? Answers Rolands, I might go very well. Certes you'll not, says Oliver, his friend, for your courage is fierce unto the end. I am afraid you would misapprehend. If the king wills it, I might go there well. Answers the king, Be silent, both on bench. Your feet nor his, I say, shall that way wend. Nay, by this beard that you have seen grow blench, the dozen peers by that would stand condemned. Franks hold their peace. You'd seen them all silent. Turpins of Reigns is risen from his rank, says to the king, In peace now leave your Franks. For seven years you've lingered in this land. They have endured much pain and sufferance. Give, sire, to me the clove, also the wand. I will seek out the Spanish Sarazand, for I believe his thoughts I understand. The emperor answers intolerant. Go sit you down on yonder silken mat, and speak no more until that I command. Frank's chevaliers, says the emperor then, Charles, choose ye me out a baron from my marches, to Marsili shall carry back my answer. Then says Rolands, there's Gawain's my good father. Answer the Franks, for he can wisely manage, so let him go, there's none you should send rather. And that Count Gawain's is very full of anguish, off from his neck he flings the pelts of Martin, and on his feet stands clear in silken garment. Proud face he had, his eyes with colour sparkled, fine limbs he had, his ribs were broadly arched. So fair he seemed that all the court regarded. Says to Rolant, Fool, wherefore art so wrathful? All men know well that I am thy good father. Thou hast decreed to Massilion I travel. Then if God grant that I return hereafter, I'll follow thee with such a force of passion that will endure so long as life may last thee. Answers Rolands, Thou art full of pride and madness. All men know well, I take no thought for slander. But some wise man surely should bear the answer. If the king will, I'm ready to go rather. Answers him Gawain, Thou shalt not go for me. Thou art not my man, nor am I lord of thee. Charles commands that I do his decree, To Saragoose going to Massilli. There I will work a little trickery. This mighty wrath of mine I'll thus let free. When Rolands heard, began to laugh for glee. When Gawain sees that Roland laughs at it, such grief he has, for rage he's like to split. A little more, and he has lost his wit. Says to that count, I love you not a bit. A false judgment you bore me when you chid. Right, Emperor, you see me where you sit. I will your word accomplish. As you bid. To Saragoose I must repair, tis plain, whence who goes there returns no more again. Your sister's hand in marriage have I ta'en, and I've a son, there is no prettier swain. Baldwin, men say he shows the knightly strain. To him I leave my honours and domain. Care well for him, he'll look for me in vain. Answers him Charles. Your heart is too humane. When I command, time is to start a main. Then says the king, Gawain's before me stand, and take from me the glove, also the wand. For you have heard, you're chosen by the Franks. Sire, answers Gawain's, all this is from Rolands. I'll not love him so long as I'm a man, nor Oliver who goes at his right hand. A dozen peers, for they are of his band, all I defy, as in your sight I stand. Then says the king, Over intolerant, now certainly you go when I command. And go I can, yet have I no warrant, Basile had none, nor his brother Basant. 
his right-hand glove that emperor holds out, but the Count Guain's elsewhere would fain be found. When he should take, it falls upon the ground. Murmur the Franks, God, what may that mean now? By this message great loss shall come about. Lordings, says Gawain, you'll soon have news enow. Now, Gawain said, give me your order, sire, since I must go, why need I linger, I? Then said the king, In Yeasi's name and mine, with his right hand he has absolved and signed, then to his care the wand and brief confides. Gawain's the count goes to his hostelry, finds for the road his garments and his gear, all of the best he takes that may appear, spurs of fine gold he fastens on his feet, and to his side mergles his sword of steel. On Tach Brun his charger next he leaps. His uncle holds the stirrup, Grinamir. Then you had seen so many knights to weep, who all exclaim, Unlucky lord indeed! In the king's court these many years you've been. Noble vassal, they say that you have seen. He that for you this journey has decreed, King Charlemagne will never hold him dear. The Count Rolant, he should not so have deemed, knowing you were born of very noble breed. After, they say, us too, sire, shall he lead. Then answers Gawains, not so the Lord be pleased, far better one than many knights should bleed. To France the dutes, my lords, you soon shall speed. On my behalf, my gentle wife, you'll greet, and Pinabel, who is my friend and peer, and Baldwin, my son, whom you have seen. His rights accord, and help him in his need. Rides down the road, and on his way goes he. Gawain's canters on, and halts beneath a tree, Where Sarazins assembled he may see, With Blancondrines who abides his company. Cunning and keen they speak then, each to each. Says Blancondrines, Charles, what a man is he, Who conquered Puil and the whole of Calabri, into England he crossed the bitter sea, to the holy Pope restored again his fee. What seeks he now of us in our country? Then answers Gawain, So great courage hath he, never was man against him might succeed. Says Blancondrines, Gentle the Franks are found, yet a great wrong these dukes do and these counts unto their lord being in council proud. Him and themselves they harry and confound. Gawain's replies, There is none such without, Only Roland's whom shame will yet find out. Once in the shade the king had sate him down, His nephew came in sark of iron brown, Spoils had he won, beyond by Carcassonne, Held in his hand an apple red and round. Behold, fair sire, said Roland's as he bowed, Of all earth's kings I bring you here the crowns. His cruel pride must shortly him confound, Each day towards death he goes a little down. When he be slain, shall peace once more abound. Says Blancondrines, A cruel man, Roland, that would bring down to bondage every man, And challenges the peace of every land. With what people takes he this task in hand? And answers Gawain, The people of the Franks, they love him so, for men he'll never want. Silver and gold he showers upon his band, Charges and mules, garments and silken mats. The king himself holds all by his command. From hence to the east he'll conquer sea and land. Cantered so far then Blancondrines and Gawain, Till each by each a covenant had made, And sought a plan how Roland might be slain. Cantered so far by valley and by plain, To Saragoose beneath a cliff they came. There a foldstool stood in a pine-tree's shade, Enveloped all in Alexandrine veils. There was the king that held the whole of a Spain, Twenty thousand of Saracens his train. Nor was there one but did his speech contain, Eager for news till they might hear the tale, Haste into sight, then Blancondrines and Gawain. Blancondrine comes before Massilion, holding the hand of County Gwenolun, says to the king, Lord save you, sire Mahun, and Apollon, whose holy laws here run. Your message we delivered to Shalun, 
Both his two hands he raised against the sun, praising his God, but answer made he none. He sends you here his noblest born baron, greatest in wealth that out of France is come. From him you'll hear if peace shall be or none. Speak, said Marcille, we'll hear him every one. But the Count Gawains did deeply meditate, cunning and keen, began at length and spake, even as one that knoweth well the way. And to the king, May God preserve you safe, the all-glorious to whom we're bound to pray. Proud Charlemagne, this message bids me say, You must receive the holy Christian faith, and yield in fee one half the lands of Spain. If to accord this tribute you disdain, taken by force and bound in iron chain, you will be brought before his throne at Aix. Judged and condemned you'll be, and shortly slain. Yes, you will die in misery and shame. King Marsilies was very sore afraid. Snatching a dart with golden feathers gay, he made to strike. They turned aside his aim. King Marsilies is turned white with rage. His feathered dart he brandishes and shakes. Gawain's beholds, his sword in hand he takes, two fingers' width from scabbard bears the blade, and says to it, O clear and fair and brave, before this king in court will so behave, that the emperor of France shall never say, In a strange land I'd thrown my life away, before these chiefs thy temper had assayed. Let us prevent this fight, the pagans say. Then Sarazins implored him so, the chiefs, on the fold-stool, Marsilies took his seat. Greatly you harm our cause, says the Al-Khalif, when on this frank your vengeance you would wreak. Rather you should listen to hear him speak. Sire, Gawain says, to suffer I am meek. I will not fail, for all the gold God keeps. Nay, should this land its treasure pile in heaps, but I will tell, so long as I be free. What Charlemagne, that royal majesty, bids me inform his mortal enemy. Gawain's had on a cloak of sable skin, and over it a veil Alexandrine. These he throws down, they're held by Blancondrine, but not his sword, he'll not leave hold of it. In his right hand he grafts the golden hilt. The pagans say, A noble baron this! Before the king's face, Gawain's drawing near, says to him, Sire, wherefore this rage and fear? Seeing you are, by Charles, of Franks the chief, bidden to hold the Christian's right belief. One half of Spain he'll render as your fief, the rest Rollands his nephew shall receive. Proud parsoner in him you'll have indeed. If you will not to Charles this tribute cede, to you he'll come and Saragoose besiege take you by force, and bind you hands and feet, bear you outright, even unto X his seat. You will not then on palfrey nor on steed, jennet nor mule, come cantering in your speed. Flung you will be on a vile sumpter beast, tried there and judged, your head you will not keep. Our emperor has sent you here this brief. He's given it into the pagan's neef. Now Marsilies is turned white with ire. He breaks the seal and casts the wax aside, looks in the brief, sees what the king did write. Charles commands who holds all France by might. I bear in mind his bitter grief and ire. Tis of Bassan and his brother Basili, whose heads I took on the hill by Haltilly. If I would save my body now alive, I must dispatch my uncle the Alkalife. Charles will not love me ever otherwise. After there speaks his son to Marsili, says to the king, In madness spoke this wight, so wrong he was to spare him were not right. Leave him to me, I will that wrong requite. When Gawain's hears, he draws his sword outright, against the trunk he stands beneath that pine. The king is gone into that orchard then, with him he takes the best among his men, and Blancondrines there shows his snowy hair, and Gersolet was the king's son and heir. And the Al-Khalif, his uncle and his friend, 
says Blancondrines, summon the Frank again. In our service his faith to me he's pledged. Then says the king, so let him now be fetched. He's taken Gawain's by his right finger ends, and through the orchard straight to the king they wend. Of treason there make lawless parliament. End of verses 1 to 38。verses 39 to 87 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland, Anonymous, translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief, verses 39 to 87. Fair Master Gawains, says then King Marsili, I did you now a little trickery, making to strike I showed my great fury. These sable skins take as amends from me, five hundred pounds would not their worth redeem. Tomorrow night the gift shall ready be. Gawain answers him, I'll not refuse it me. May God be pleased to show you his mercy. Then says Marsil, Gawain's the truth to ken. Minded I am to love you very well. Of Charlemagne I wish to hear you tell. He's very old, his time is nearly spent. Two hundred years he's lived now, as tis said. Through many lands his armies he has led, so many blows his buckled shield has shed, And so rich kings he's brought to beg their bread. What time from war will he draw back instead? And answers Gawain's, Not so was Charles bred. There is no man that sees and knows him well, But will proclaim the emperor's hardy head. Praise him as best I may, when all is said, Remain untold honour and goodness yet. His great valour, how can it be counted? Him with such grace hath God illumined. Better to die than leave his banneret. The pagan says, You make me marvel sore At Charlemagne, who is so old and hoar. Two hundred years, they say, he's lived and more. So many lands he's led his armies o'er, So many blows from spears and lances borne, And so rich kings brought down to beg and sawn. When will time come that he draws back from war? Never, says Gawains, so long as lives his nephew. No such vassal goes neath the dome of heaven, And proof also is Oliver, his henchman. The dozen peers whom Charles holds so precious, These are his guards, with other thousands twenty. Charles is secure, he holds no man in terror. Says Sarazin, my wonder yet is grand, at Charlemagne, who hoary is and blanched. Two hundred years and more, I understand, he has gone forth and conquered many a land. Such blows hath borne from many a trenchant lance, vanquished and slain of kings so rich a band. When will time come that he from war draws back? Never, says Gawain, so long as lives Rolands. From hence to the east there is no such vassal, and proof also Oliver his comrade, the dozen peers he cherishes at hand. These are his guard, with twenty thousand francs. Charles is secure, he fears no living man. Fair Master Gawains, says Marsilies the king, such men are mine, fairer than tongue can sing. Of knights I can four hundred thousand bring, so I may fight with Franks and with their king. Answers him Gawains, not on this journeying, save of pagans, a great loss suffering. Leave you the fools, wise counsel following. To the emperor such wealth of treasure give, that every frank at once is marvelling. For twenty men that you shall now send in, to France the deuce he will repair that king. In the rearward will follow after him both his nephew, Count Rolant, as I think, and Oliver, that courteous paladin. Dead are the counts, Believe me, if you will, Charles will behold his great pride perishing. For battle, then, he'll have no more the skill. Fair Master Gawain, says then King Marsili, 
show the device how Roland slain may be. Answers him Gawains, that will I soon make clear. The king will cross by the good pass of seas, a guard he'll set behind him in the rear. His nephew there, Count Roland, that rich peer, and Oliver, in whom he well believes. Twenty thousand francs in their company, five score thousand pagans upon them lead. Franks unawares in battle you shall meet. Bruised and bled white the race of Franks shall be. I do not say, but yours shall also bleed. Battle again deliver and with speed. So, first or last, from Roland you'll be freed. You will have wrought a high chivalrous deed, nor all your life no war again, but peace. Could one achieve that Roland's life was lost, Charles' right arm were from his body torn. Though there remained his marvellous great host, he'd not again assemble in such force. Terror major would languish in repose. Marcille has heard, he's kissed him on the throat. Next he begins to undo his treasure store. Said Marsili, but now what more, said they? No faith in words, by oath unbound I lay, Swear me the death of Roland on that day. Then answered Gawain, So be it, as you say. On the relics are in his sword murgles, Treason he's sworn, forsworn his faith away. Was a fold still there, made of oliphant, A book thereon Marsilies bade them plant. In it their laws, Mahams and Tervagants. He saw thereby the Spanish Sarazand, in the rearward if he shall find Roland, battle to himself and all his band, and verily he'll slay him if he can. And answered Gawains, So be it, as you command. In haste there came a pagan Valdebrun. Warden had been to King Marsilion. Smiling and clear he said to Gwenelun, Take now this sword, and better sword has none. Into the hilt a thousand coins are run. To you, fair sir, I offer it in love. Give us your aid from Roland the Baron, that in rearward against him we may come. Gawain's the Count answers, It shall be done. Then, cheek and chin, kissed each the other one. After there came a pagan Climorins, Smiling and clear to Gwenelon begins, Take now my helm, better is none than this, But give us aid on Roland the Marquis, By what device we may dishonour bring. It shall be done, Count Gawain's answered him, On mouth and cheek then each the other kissed. In haste there came the queen forth Brimimond, I love you well, sir, said she to the Count, For prize you dear, my lord, and all around, here for your wife I have two brooches found, amethysts and jacinths in golden mount. More worth are they than all the wealth of Rome. Your emperor has none such, I'll be bound. He's taken them, and in his hosen pouched. The king now calls Maldoriz that guards his treasure. Tribute for child's say, is it now made ready? He answers him, Ay, sire, for here is plenty. Silver and gold on hundred camels seven, And twenty men the gentlest under heaven. Marsili's arm Gawain's shoulder doth enfold. He said to him, You are both wise and bold. Now, by the law that you most sacred hold, Let not your heart in our behalf grow cold. Out of my store I'll give you wealth untold, Charging ten mules with fine Arabian gold. I'll do the same for you, New year and old. Take then the keys of this city so large, This great tribute present you first to Charles. Then get me placed Roland's in the rearward. If him I find in valley or in pass, Battle I'll give him, that shall be the last. Answers him Gawain's, My time is nearly past. His charger mounts, and on his journey starts. That emperor draws near to his domain. He is come down unto the city Gelnay. The Count Roland has broken it and tame. An hundred years its ruins shall remain. Of Gwenelon the king for news is fain, And for tribute from the great land of Spain. At dawn of day, just as the light grows plain, Into their camp is come the county Gawain. In morning time is risen the emperor, 
Matins and mass he's heard and made his prayer. On the green grass before the tent his chair, Where Rolant stood and that bold Oliver, Nimes the duke and many others there, Guwain's arrived, the felon perjurer, Begins to speak with very cunning air, Says to the king, God keep you, sigh, I swear, Of Saragus the keys to you I bear, Tribute I bring you, very great and rare, And twenty men, look after them with care. Proud Marsilies bade me this word declare, That al Khalif, his uncle, you must spare. My own eyes saw four hundred thousand there, In hauberks dressed, closed helms that gleamed in the air, And golden hilts upon their swords they bear. They followed him, right to the sea they'll fare. Marsil they left, that would their faith forswear, For Christendom they've neither wish nor care. But the fourth league they had not compassed ere, Break from the north tempest and storm in the air. Then were they drowned, they will no more appear. Were he alive, I should have brought him here. The pagan king in truth, sire, bids you hear. Ere you have seen one month pass of this year, He'll follow you to France, to your empire. He will accept the laws you hold and fear. Joining his hands will do you homage there. Kingdom of Spain will hold as you declare. Then says the king, now God be praised, I swear. Well have you wrought, and rich reward shall wear. Bids through the host a thousand trumpets blare. Franks lead their lines, the sumpter beasts are yeah. Towards France the deuce, all on their way repair. Charles the Great, that land of Spain, had wasted. Her castles tain, her cities violated. Then said the king, his war was now abated. Towards Deuce France that emperor has hasted, Upon a lance Rolant his ensign raised, High on a cliff against the sky it was placed, The Franks in camp through all that country baited, Cantered pagans through those wide valleys raced, Hauberks they wore, and sarks with iron plated, Swords to their sides were girt, their helms were laced, Lances made sharp, as scutcheons newly painted, there in the mists beyond the peaks remained, The day of doom for a hundred thousand waited. God, what a grief! Franks know not what is fated. Passes the day, the darkness is grown deep. That emperor, rich Charles, lies asleep. Dreams that he stands in the great pass of seas. In his two hands his ashen spear he sees. Gawain's the count that spear from him doth seize. Brandishes it and twists it with such ease That flown into the sky the flinders seen. Charles sleeps on, nor wakens from his dream. And after this another vision saw, In France at Aix, in his chapelle once more, That his right arm an evil bear did gnaw. Out of Ardennes he saw a leopard stalk, His body dear did savagely assault. But then there dashed a harrier from the hall, Leaping in the air he sped to Charles' call. First the right ear of that grim bear he caught, And furiously the leopard next he fought. Of battle great the Franks then seemed to talk, Yet which might win they knew not in his thought. Charles sleeps on, nor wakens he for aught. Passes the night and opens the clear day, that emperor canters in brave array, Looks through the host often in every way. My lord's barons, at length doth Charles say, Ye see the pass along these valleys straight, Judge for me now, who shall in rearward wait? There's my good son Rollins, then answers Gawains, You've no baron whose valour is as great. When the king hears, he looks upon him straight, And says to him, you devil incarnate, into your heart is come a mortal hate, And who shall go before me in the gate? Ogre is here, of Denmark, answers Gawains. You've no baron were better in that place. The Count Rollins hath heard himself decreed, Speaks then to Gawains by rule of courtesy. Good father, sir, I ought to hold you dear, Since the rearward you have for me decreed. Charles the king will never lose by me, as I know well, nor charger nor palfrey, 
Jennet nor mule that canter can with speed, Nor sumpter horse will lose, nor any steed, But my sword's point shall first exact their meed. Answers him Gawains, I know, tis true indeed. When Rolant heard that he should be rearwarden, Furiously he spoke to his good father, Aha, culvert, begotten of a bastard, Thinkest the glove will slip from me hereafter, As then from thee the wand fell before Charles. Right emperor, says the baron Rolands, Give me the bow you carry in your hand, Ne'er in reproach I know will any man Say that it fell and lay upon the land, As Gawain's let fall when he received the wand. That emperor with lowered front doth stand, He tugs his beard, his chin is in his hand, Tears fill his eyes, he cannot them command. And after that is come Duke Neem's firth, Better vassal there was not upon earth, Says to the king, Right well now have you heard, The Count Rolands to bitter wrath is stirred, For that on him the rearward is conferred, No baron else have you would do that work, Give him the bow your hands have bent at first, then find him men, his company are worth. Gives it the king, and Roland bears it forth. That emperor Roland's then calleth he, Fair nephew mine, know this in verity, Half of my host I leave you presently, Retain you them, your safeguard this shall be. Then says the count, I will not have them me, Confound me, God, if I fail in the deed, Good valiant Franks, a thousand score I'll keep. Go through the pass in all security. While I'm alive, there's no man you need fear. The Count Rolands has mounted his charger. Beside him came his comrade Oliver. Also Gerin and the proud Count Gerier. And Otis came, and also Berengier. Old Anse and Sanson too came there. Gerard also of Roncillon the Fierce. And there is come the Gascon Gilier. Now by my head I'll go, the Archbishop swears. And I'm with you, says the Count Gaultier. I'm Roland's man, I may not leave him there. A thousand score they choose of Chevalier. Gaultier de whom he calls, that Count Roland's. A thousand francs take out of France our land, Dispose them so among ravines and crags, that the emperor lose not a single man. Gaultier replies, I'll do as you command. A thousand francs come out of France their land, At Gaultier's word they scour ravines and crags. They'll not come down, however the news be bad, Ere from their sheaths sword seven hundred flash. King Almeri, Belcern for kingdom had, On the evil day he met them in combat. High are the peaks, the valleys shadowful, Swarthy the rocks, the narrows wonderful. Franks passed that day all very sorrowful, Fifteen leagues round the rumour of them grew, When they were come and Terra Major knew, Saw Gascony their land and their seigneurs, Remembering their fiefs and their honours, Their little maids, their gentle wives and true. There was not one that shed not tears for rue, Beyond the rest Charles was of anguish full, In Spanish pass he'd left his dear nephew, Pity him seized, he could but weep for rue. The dozen peers are left behind in Spain, Franks in their band a thousand score remain, No fear have these, death hold they in disdain. That emperor goes into France apace, Under his cloak he fain would hide his face, up to his side comes cantering Duke Nimes, says to the king, What grief upon you weighs? Charles answers him, He's wrong that question makes, So great my grief I cannot but complain. France is destroyed by the device of Gawain. This night I saw by an angel's vision plain, Between my hands he break my spear in twain. Great fear I have, since Roland must remain, I've left him there upon a border strange. God, if he's lost, I'll not outlive that shame. Charles the Great, he cannot but deplore, 
and with him Franks an hundred thousand mourn, who for Rolands have marvellous remorse. The felon Gawains had treacherously wrought, from pagan kin has had his rich reward, silver and gold and veils and silken cloths, camels, lions with many a mule and horse. Barons from Spain King Marsilies hath called, counts and viscounts and dukes and alma corps, and the admirals and cadets nobly born. Within three days come hundreds thousands four. In Saragoose they sound the drums of war. Mahum they raise upon their highest tower. Pagan is none that does not him adore. They canter then with great contention, through certain land, valleys and mountains, on, till of the Franks they see the gonfalons, being in rearward those dozen companions. They will not fail battle to do anon. Marcille's nephew is come before the band, Riding a mule, he goads it with a wand, Smiling and clear, his uncle's ear demands, Fair lord and king, since, in your service glad, I have endured sorrow and sufferance, Have fought in field, and victories have had, Give me a fee, the right to smite Rolands, I'll slay him clean with my good trenchant lance, If Mahomet will be my sure warrant. Spain I'll set free, deliver all her land, From pass of Asper even unto Durastant. Charles will grow faint and recreant the Franks, There'll be no war while you're a living man. Marsili gives the glove into his hand. Marsile's nephew, holding in hand the glove, His uncle calls, with reason proud enough, Fair lord and king, great gift from you I've won. Choose now for me eleven more barons, So I may fight those dozen companions. First before all their answers fall for run. Brother he was to King Marsilion. Fair sir nephew, go you and I at once, Then verily this battle shall be done. The rearward of the great host of Carlon, It is decreed we deal them now their doom. King Corsabli is come from the other part, Barbarian and steeped in evil art. He's spoken then as fits a good vassal, For all God's gold he would not seem coward. Hastes into view Malprimi of Brigal, Faster than a horse upon his feet he can dart, Before Marsile he cries with all his heart, My body I will show at Roncesvalles, Find I Rolands, I'll slay him without fault. An admiral is there of Balaget, clear face and proud, and body nobly bred. Since first he was upon his horse mounted, his arms to bear has shown great lusty head. In vassalage he is well famous, said. Christian were he, he'd shown good baronhead. Before Marsile aloud has he shouted, To Roncesvalles my body shall be led. Find I, Rolands, then is he surely dead, and Oliver and all the other twelve. Franks shall be slain in grief and wretchedness. Charles the Great is old now and doted. Weary will be, and make no more war again. Spain shall be ours in peace and quietness. King Marsilies has heard, and thanks him well. An alma corps is there of Morien, More felon none in all the land of Spain. Before Marsile his vaunting boast hath made, To Roncesvalles my company I'll take, A thousand score with shields and lances brave, Find I, Rolands, with death I'll him acquaint, Day shall not dawn, but Charles will make his plaint. From the other part, Turgis of Turtleloes, He was a count, that city was his own, Christians he would the massacre every one, before Marsile among the rest is gone, says to the king, Let not dismay be shown, Maham's more worth than St. Peter of Rome, Serve we him well, then fame in field will own. To Roncesvalles to meet Rolands I'll go, From death he'll find his warranty in none. See here my sword that is both good and long, With Durandal I'll lay it well across. You'll hear betimes to which the prize is gone, Franks shall be slain whom we descend upon, Charles the Old will suffer grief and wrong, 
no more on earth his crown will he put on. From the other part, Escrimez of Valtren, a Sarazin, that land was his as well. Before Marseille he cries amid the press, To Ronceval I'll go, pride to make less. Find I, Rolance, will not bear fence his head, Nor Oliver that hath the others led. The dozen peers condemned are to death. Franks shall be slain, and France lie deserted. Of good vassals will Charles be richly bled. From the other part, a pagan Estergans, Estramariz also, was his comrade. Felons were these, and traitors miscreant. Then said Marcille, My lords before me stand, Into the pass you'll go to Ronceval. Give me your aid, and thither lead my band. They answer him, Sire, even as you command, We will assault Olivier and Rolant. The dozen peers from death have no warrant. For these our swords are trusty and trenchant. In scalding blood will dye their blades scarlet. Franks shall be slain, and Charles be right sad. Terror major will give into your hand. Come there, sir king, truly you'll see all that. Yea, the emperor will give into your hand. Running there came Marguerite of Sibylle, who holds the land by Cadiz to the sea. For his beauty the ladies hold him dear who looks on him, with him her heart is pleased. When she beholds, she can but smile for glee. Was no pagan of such high chivalry. Come through the press, above them all, cries he. Be not at all dismayed, King Marsili, to Ronceval I'll go, and Roland's he, nor Oliver may escape alive from me. The dozen peers are doomed to martyry. See here the sword, whose hilt is gold indeed, I got in gift from the admiral of primes. In scarlet blood I pledge it shall be steeped. Franks shall be slain, and France abased be. To Charles the old, with his great blossoming beard, day shall not dawn, but brings him rage and grief. Ere a year pass, all France we shall have seized, till we can lie in the burg of Saint Denis. The pagan king has bowed his head down deep. From the other part, Chamubles of Mune Grey, right to the ground, his hair swept either way. He for a jest would bear a heavier weight than four yoked mules beneath their load that strain. That land he had, God's curse on it was plain. No sun shone there, nor grew there any grain. No dew fell there, nor any shower of rain. The very stones were black upon that plain, and many say that devils there remain. Says Chamubles, my sword is in its place, at Ronceval scarlet I will it stain. Find I, Rolands, the proud upon my way, I'll fall on him, or trust me not again. At Durandal I'll conquer with this blade, Franks shall be slain, and France a desert made. The dozen peers are at this word away, five score thousand of Sarazens they take, who keenly press, and on to battle haste. In a firwood their gear they ready make. Ready they make hauberk Sarazenes, That folded are the greater part in three, And they lace on good helms Saragusses, Gird on their swords of tried steel Viennese, Fine shields they have, and spears Valentinese, And white, blue, red, the ensigns take the breeze, They've left their mules behind in their palfreys, their charges mount, and canter knee by knee. Fair shines the sun, the day is bright and clear. Light bums again from all their polished gear. A thousand horns they sound, more proud to seem. Great is the noise, the Franks its echo hear. Says Oliver, companion, I believe, Sarazans now in battle must we meet. Answers Rolands, God grant us then the fee, For our king's sake well must we quit us here. Man for his lord should suffer great disease, Most bitter cold endure and burning heat. His hair and skin should offer up at need. Now must we each lay on most hardily, So evil songs near sung of us shall be. Pagans are wrong, Christians are right indeed. Evil example will never come of me. Oliver mounts upon a lofty peak, Looks to his right along the valley green, 
The pagan tribes approaching there appear. He calls Rolands his companion to see. What sound is this come out of Spain we hear? What hauberks bright, what helmets these that gleam? They'll smite our Franks with fury past belief. He knew it, Guaines, the traitor and the thief, who chose us out before the king, our chief. Answers the Count Rolands, Olivier, cease. That man is my good father. Hold thy peace. Upon a peak is Oliver mounted, Kingdom of Spain he sees before him spread, And Sarazans so many gathered. Their helmets gleam, with gall are jeweled, Also their shields, their hauberks are freed, Also their swords, on signs on spears fixed. Rank beyond rank could not be numbered, So many there, no measure could he set. In his own heart he saw astonished, Fast as he could, down from the peak hath sped, Comes to the Franks, to them his tale hath said. Says Oliver, Pagans from there I saw, Never on earth did any man see more. Gainst us their shields an hundred thousand bore, That laced helms and shining hauberks wore. And, bolt upright, their bright brown spearheads shone. Battle will have as never was before. Lords of the Franks, God keep you in valour. So hold your ground, we be not overborne. Then say the Franks, shame take him that goes off. If we must die, then perish one and all. Says Oliver, pagans in force abound, while of us Franks but very few I count. Comrade Rolands, your horn I pray you sound. If Charles here, he'll turn his armies round. Answers Rolands, a fool I should be found, in France the deuce would perish my renown. With Durandal I'll lay on thick and stout, in blood the blade to its golden hilt I'll drown. Felon pagans to the pass shall not come down. I pledge you now, to death they all are bound. Comrade Roland, sound the oliphant, I pray. If Charles hear, the host will turn again. Will succour us our king and baronage. Answers Rolands, never, by God, I say, for my misdeeds shall kinsmen hear the blame, nor France nor Deuce fall into evil fame. Rather stout blows with Durandal I'll lay, with my good sword that by my side doth sway, till bloody door you shall behold the blade. Felon pagans are gathered to their shame, I pledge you now, to death they're doomed to-day. Comrade Rolands, once sound your oliphant, if Charles here, where in the pass he stands, I pledge you now they'll turn again the Franks. Never, by God, then answers him Rolands, shall it be said by any living man that for pagans I took my horn in hand. Never by me shall men reproach my clan when I am come into the battle grand, and blows lay on by hundred by thousand, of Durandal bloodied you'll see the brand. Franks are good men. Like vassals brave they'll stand. Nay, Spanish men from death have no warrant. Says Oliver, In this I see no blame. I have beheld the Sarazans of Spain, Covered with them the mountains and the vales, The wastes I saw, and all the farthest plains. A muster great they've made, this people strange. We have of men a very little tale. Answers Rolands, My anger is inflamed. Never, please God, his angels and his saints, Never by me shall Frankish valour fail. Rather I'll die than shame shall me attain. Therefore strike on the emperor's love to gain. Pride hath Rolands, wisdom Olivia hath, And both of them show marvellous courage. Once they are horsed, once they have donned their arms, Rather they die than from the battle pass. Good are the counts, and lofty their language. Felon pagans come cantering in their wrath. Says Oliver, Behold and see, Rolands, these are right near, but Charles is very far. On the oliphant deign now to sound a blast. Were the king here, we should not fear damage. Only look up towards the pass of Asper. In sorrow there you'll see the whole rearward. Who does this deed does no more afterward. 
answers Rolands, Utter not such outrage, evil his heart that is in thought coward. We shall remain firm in our place installed, from us the blows shall come, from us the assault. End of verses 39 to 87. Verses 88 to 138 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland, Anonymous, translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 88 to 138. When Rolant sees that now must be combat, more fierce he's found than lion or leopard. The Franks he calls, and Oliver commands, Now say no more, my friends, nor thou, comrade, that emperor who left us Franks on guard, a thousand score stout men he set apart, and well he knows not one will prove coward. Man for his lord should suffer with good heart, of bitter cold and great heat bear the smart. His blood let drain, and all his flesh be scarred. Strike with thy lance, and I with Durandal, with my good sword that was the king's reward. So if I die, who has it afterward, noble vassals he well may say it was. From the other part is the Archbishop Turpin. He pricks his horse and mounts upon a hill. Calling the Franks, sermon to them begins. My lords barons, Charles left us here for this. He is our king. Well may we die for him. To Christendom good service offering. Battle you'll have, you all are bound to it. For with your eyes you see the Saracens. Pray for God's grace, confessing him your sins. For your soul's health. I'll absolution give. So though you die, blessed martyrs shall you live. Thrones you shall win in the great paradis. The Franks dismount, upon the ground are lit. That archbishop God's benediction gives. For their penance, good blows to strike he bids. The Franks arise and stand upon their feet. They're well absolved and from their sins made clean. And the archbishop has signed them with God's seal and next they mount upon their charges keen. By rule of knights they have put on their gear, for battle or apparelled as is meet. The Count Rollant calls Oliver and speaks. Comrade and friend, now clearly have you seen that Grenolin hath got us by deceit. Gold hath he ta'en, much wealth is his to keep. That emperor of vengeance for us must wreak. King Mastilis hath bargained for us cheap at the sword's point. He yet shall pay our meed. To Spanish pass is Rolant's now going, On Valentif his good steed galloping. He is well armed, pride is in his bearing. He goes so brave, his spear in hand holding. He goes its point against the sky turning. A gonfalon all white thereon he's pinned. Down to his hand flutters the golden fringe. Noble his limbs, his face clear and smiling. His companion goes after, following. The men of France their warrant find in him. Proudly he looks towards the Saracens, and to the Franks sweetly, himself humbling, and courteously has said to them this thing. My lords barons, go now your pace holding. Pagans are come great martyrdom seeking. Noble and fair reward this day shall bring was never won by any Frankish king. Upon these words the hosts are come touching. Speaks Oliver, No more now will I say, Your Oliphant to sound it do not deign, Since from Calun you'll never more have aid. He has not heard, nor fault of his so brave. Those with him there are never to be blamed, So canter on with what prowess you may. Lords and barons firmly your ground maintain. Be minded well, I pray you, in God's name. Stout blows to strike, to give as you shall take. Forget the cry of Charles we never may. Upon this word, the Franks cry out amain, Who then had heard them all Montjoy acclaim. Of vassalage might well recall the tale. 
they canter forth, God, with what proud parade, pricking their spurs the better speed to gain. They go to strike, what other thing could they? But Saracens are not at all afraid. Pagans and Franks, you'd see them now engaged. Marcille's nephew, his name is Aelroth, first of them all canters before the host, says of our Franks these ill words as he goes. Felons of France, so here on us you close. Betrayed you has he that to your guard you ought. Mad is the king who left you in this post. So shall the fame of France the deuce be lost, and the right arm from Charles' body torn. When Roland hears what rage he has by God, his steed he spurs, gallops with great effort. He goes, that count, to strike with all his force. The shield he breaks, the hauberk seam unsews. Slices the heart, and shatters up the bones. All of the spine he severs with that blow, And with his spear the soul from body throws. So well he's pinned, he shakes in the air that course, On his spear's hilt he's flung it from the horse. So in two halves Aeroth's neck he broke, Nor left him yet, they say, but rather spoke. Avant, Calvert, a madman Charles is not, No treachery was ever in his thought. Proudly he did, who left us in this post. The fame of France the deuce shall not be lost. Strike on the Franks, ours are the foremost blows. For we are right, but these gluttons are wrong. A duke there was, his name was Falfaran. Brother was he to King Marsilian. He held their land, Dathan's and Abiran's. Beneath the sky no more in crime fell un. Between his eyes so broad was he in front, a great half-foot you'd measure there in full. His nephew dead he's seen with grief enough, comes through the press and wildly forth he runs. Aloud he shouts their cry the pagans use, and to the Franks is right contrarious. Honour of France the deuce shall fail to us. Here's Oliver, he's very furious. His horse he pricks with both his golden spurs, and goes to strike, even as a baron doth. The shield he breaks, and through the hauberk cuts, his ensign's fringe into the carcass thrusts. On his spear's hilt he's flung it dead in dust, looks on the ground, sees glutton lying thus, and says to him, with reason proud enough, From threatening, Calvert, your mouth I've shut. Strike on, the Franks, right well will overcome. Monjoy, he shouts, t'was the ensign of Carlan. A king there was, his name was Corsabli, barbarian, and of a strange country. He's called aloud to the other Saracens. Well may we join battle upon this field, for of the Franks but very few are here, and those are here we should account them cheap, for Charles not one has any warranty. This is the day when they their death shall meet. Has heard him well that Archbishop Turpin, no man he'd hate so much the sky beneath. Spurs of fine gold he pricks into his steed, To strike that king by virtue great goes he. The hauberk all unfastens, breaks the shield, Thrusts his great spear in through the carcass clean, Pins it so well he shakes it in its seat, Dead in the road he's flung it from his spear, Looks on the ground that glutton lying sees, Nor leaves him yet, they say, but rather speaks. Colver pagan, you lied now in your teeth, Charles, my lord, our warrant is indeed. None of our Franks hath any mind to flee. Your companions all on this spot will keep. I tell you news, death shall ye suffer here. Strike on, the Franks, fail none of you at need. Ours the first blow, to God the glory be. Monjoy, he cries, for all the camp to hear. And Gerin strikes Malpremie of Brigal, so his good shield is nothing worth at all. Shatters the boss, was fashioned of crystal. One half of it downward to earth flies off. Right to the flesh has through his hauberk torn. On his good spear he has the carcass caught, and with one blow that pagan downward falls. The soul of him Satan away hath borne. And his comrade Gerez strikes the admiral, 
the shield he breaks, the hauberk unmetals, and his good spear drives into his vitals. So well he's pinned him, clean through the carcass, dead on the field he's flung from his hand, says Oliver, now is our battle grand. Sans and the duke go strike that armor core, the shield he breaks with golden flowers tooled, that good hauberk for him is nothing proof, he sliced the heart, the lungs and liver through, and flung him dead, as well or ill may prove, says the archbishop, a barren stroke in truth. And Ansay has let his charger run, he goes to strike Turgis of Turtilus, the shield he breaks, its golden boss above, the hauberk too its doubled mail undoes, his good spear's point into the carcass runs, so well he's thrust, clean through the whole steel comes, and from the hilt he's thrown him dead in dust. Then says Roland, Great prowess in that thrust! And Angelus, the Gascoigne of Burdell, spurs on his horse, lets fall the reins as well. He goes to strike Escremis of Valtrain, the shield he breaks and shatters on his neck. The hauberk, too, he has its chin-guard rent, between the armpits has pierced him through the breast, on his spear's hilt from saddle throws him dead. After he says, so are you turned to hell. And Otis strikes a pagan estorgant, upon the shield before its leathern band, slices it through, the white with the scarlet. The hauberk too has torn its folds apart, and his good spear thrusts clean through the carcass, and flings it dead, even as the horse goes past, he says, You have no warrant afterward. And Beringer, he strikes Estramaris, the shield he breaks, the hauberk tears and splits, thrusts his stout spear through his middle, and him flings, down dead among a thousand Sarazines. Of their dozen peers, ten have now been killed, no more than two remain alive and quick, being Chernobyl and the Count Marguerite. Marguerite is a very gallant knight, both fair and strong, and swift he is and light. He spurs his horse, goes Oliver to strike, and breaks his shield by the golden buckle bright. Along his ribs the pagan spear doth glide, God's his warrant, his body has respite. The shaft breaks off, Oliver stays upright. That other goes, naught stays him in his flight. His trumpet sounds, rallies his tribe to fight. Common the fight is now, and marvellous. The Count Rollins no way himself secures, strikes with his spear, long as the shaft endures. By fifteen blows it is clean broken through. Then Durandal he bears, his sabre good, spurs on his horse, is gone to strike Chamubal. The helmet breaks, where bright carbuncles grew, slices the cap and shears the locks in two, slices also the eyes and the features, the hauberk white, whose mail was close of woof, down to the groin cuts all his body through, to the saddle, with beaten gold t'was tooled. Upon the horse that sword a moment stood, then sliced its spine, no join there any knew, dead in the field among thick grass them threw. After, he said, Culvert, false step you moved, from Mahomet your help will not come soon, no victory for gluttons such as you. The Count Rollins, he canters through the field, holds Durandal, he well can thrust and wield. Right great damage he's done the Sarazines, you'd seen them, one on other, dead in heaps. Through all that place their blood was flowing clear. In blood his arms were and his hauberk steeped, and bloodied o'er, shoulders and neck, his steed. And Oliver goes on to strike with speed. No blame that way deserve the dozen peers, for all the Franks they strike and slay with heat. Pagans are slain, some swoon there in their seats, says the archbishop. Good baronage indeed! Monjoy, he cries, the call of Charles repeats. And Oliver has cantered through the crush, broken his spear, the truncheon still he thrusts. 
going to strike a pagan Malsoran. Flowers and gold are on the shield he cuts. Out of the head both the two eyes have burst, and all the brains are fallen in the dust. He flings him dead, seven hundred else amongst. Then has he slain Turgin and Estragus. Right to the hilt, his spear in flinders flew. Then says Rolant, Companion, what do you? In such a fight there's little strength in wood. Iron and steel should here their valour prove. Where's your sword, that halter clair I knew? Golden its hilt, whereon a crystal grew. Says Oliver, I had not, if I drew, time left to strike enough good blows and true. Then Oliver has drawn his mighty sword, as his comrade had bidden and implored. In knightly wise the blade to him was showed, just in his strikes, that iron valley's lord. All of his head has down the middle shorn, the carcass sliced, the broidered sark has torn, the good saddle that was with old adorned, and through the spine has sliced that pagan's horse. Dead in the field before his feet they fall, says Rolant, now, my brother, I you call. He'll love us for such blows, our emperor. On every side, mon joy, you'd hear them roar. That Count Gerin sate on his horse sorrel. On passeur was Gerin there his friend. They've loosed their reins, together spurred and sped, and go to strike a pagan Timozel. One on the shield, on hauberk the other fell, and their two spears went through the carcass well. A fallow field amidst they've thrown him dead. I do not know, I never heard it said, which of the two were nimbler as they went. Esperavi was there, son of Borrel, and him there slew Angulars of Burdell, and the archbishop, he slew them Siglorel, the enchanter, who before had been in hell, where Jupiter bore him by a magic spell. Then Turpin says, To us he's forfeited. Answers Rolands, The culvert is bested. Such blows, brother Olivier, I like well. The battle grows more hard and harder yet. Franks and pagans with marvellous onset. Each other strike and each himself defends. So many shafts blood-stained and shattered. So many flags and ensigns tattered. So many Franks lose their young lusty head, Who'll see no more their mothers nor their friends, Nor hosts of France that in the pass attend. Charles the Great weeps therefore with regret. What profits that? No succour shall they get. Evil service that day, Gawain's rendered them, To Saragou's going his own to sell. After he lost his members and his head, In court at Aix to gallows tree condemned, and thirty more with him, of his own kindred, were hanged, a thing they never did expect. Now marvellous and weighty the combat, right well they strike Olivier and Rolant. A thousand blows come from the archbishop's hand, the dozen peers are nothing short of that, with one accord join battle all the Franks. Pagans are slain by hundred, by thousand, who flies not then, from death has no warrant, Will he or nil, foregoes the allotted span. The Franks have lost the foremost of their band, They'll see no more their fathers nor their clans, Nor Charlemagne, where in the pass he stands. Torment arose, right marvellous in France, Tempest there was of wind and thunder black, With rain and hail, so much could not be spanned, Fell thunderbolts, often on every hand, and verily the earth quaked in answer back, From St. Michael of Peril unto Sands, From Bessencon to the harbour of Gwitsand. No house stood there but straight its walls must crack. In full midday the darkness was so grand, Save the sky split, no light was in the land, Beheld these things with terror every man. And many said, We in the judgment stand, The end of time is presently at hand. They spake no truth, they did not understand. T'was the great day of mourning for Roland. The Franks strike on, their hearts are good and stout. Pagans are slain, a thousandfold in crowds. 
left of five score are not two thousands now, says the archbishop. Our men are very proud. No man on earth has more nor better found. In chronicles of Franks is written down what vassalage he had, our emperor. Then through the field they go, their friends seek out, and their eyes weep with grief and pain profound, for kinsmen dear, by hearty friendship bound. King Marsilies and his great host draw round. King Marsilies along a valley led the mighty host that he had gathered. Twenty columns that king had numbered, with gleaming gold their helms were jewelled, shone too their shields and sarks embroidered, sounded the charge seven thousand trumpets, great was the noise through all that country went. Then said Rollanz, Olivier, brother, friend, that felon Gawains hath sworn to achieve our death, for his treason no longer is secret. Right great vengeance our emperor will get, battle will have, both long and keenly set. Never has man beheld such armies met. With Durandal my sword I'll strike again, and comrade, you shall strike with Halteclair. These swords and lands so many have we held, battles with them so many brought to end. No evil song shall e'er be sung or said. When the Franks see so many there, pagans, on every side covering all the land, often they call Olivia and Roland, the dozen peers to be their safe warrant, and the archbishop speaks to them as he can. My lords barons, go thinking nothing bad, for God, I pray you, fly not hence, but stand, lest evil songs of our valour men chant. Far better twere to perish in the van. Certain it is, our end is near at hand. Beyond this day shall no more live one man. But of one thing I give you good warrant. Blessed paradise to you now open stands. By the innocence your thrones you there shall have. Upon these words grow bold again the Franks. There is not one but he, Monjoy, demands. A Sarrazin was there of Saragoose, of that city one half was his by use. Twas Climberin's, a man with nothing proof. By Gwenolen the count an oath he took, and kissed his mouth in amity and truth, gave him his sword and his carbuncle too. Terra major, he said, to shame he'd put, from the emperor his crown he would remove. He sate his horse, which he called Baba Mush. Never so swift sparrow nor swallow flew. He spurred him well, and down the reins he threw, going to strike Angelier of Gascoon. Nor shield nor sark him any warrant proved. The pagan spear's point did his body wound. He pinned him well, and all the steel went through, from the hilt flung him dead beneath his foot. After he said, Good are they to confuse. Pagans, strike on, and so this press set loose. God, say the Franks, grief such a man to lose. The Count Rollanz called upon Oliver. Sir companion, dead now is Angela, than whom we'd no more valiant chevalier answered that count god let me him avenge spurs of fine gold into his horse drove then held halter clare with blood its steel was red by virtue great to strike that pagan went brandished his blade the sarrazin upset the adversaries of god his soul bear thence next he has slain the duke alfein and sliced away as kababi his head and has unhorsed some seven arabs else no good for those to go to war again. Then said Rollanz, My comrade shows anger, so in my sight he makes me prize him well. More dear by Charles for such blows are we held. Aloud he's cried, Strike on the chevalier! From the other part a pagan Valdebron, warden he'd been to King Marsilion, and lord by sea of four hundred Dromons, no sailor was but called his name upon. 
Jerusalem he'd taken by treason, violated the temple of Salomon, the patriarch had slain before the fonts, he'd pledged his oath by county Guenelon, gave him his sword, a thousand coins thereon. He sate his horse, which he called Gremimond, never so swift flew in the air Falcon, he's pricked him well, with sharp spurs he had on, going to strike in that rich duke Sanson. His shield has split, his hauberk has undone, the ensign's folds have through his body gone. Dead from the hilt, out of his seat he's dropped. Pagans strike on, for well will overcome. God, say the Franks, grief for a brave baron. The Count Rolands, when Sanson dead he saw, you may believe great grief he had therefore. His horse he spurs, galloped with great effort. Wields Durandal was worth fine gold and more. Goes as he may to strike that baron bold. Above the helm that was embossed with gold, Slices the head, the sark, and all the course. The good saddle that was embossed with gold, He cuts deep through the backbone of his horse. He slain them both, blame him for that, O Lord. The pagans say, "'Twas hard on us that blow," answers Rolands. "'Nay, love you I cannot, for on your side is arrogance and wrong.'" Out of Afrique an African was come. "'Twas Malkiant, the son of King Malkud. The beaten gold was all his armour done, for all men's else it shone beneath the sun. He sate his horse, which he called Salt Perdut. Never so swift was any beast could run. And unsay upon the shield he struck, the scarlet with the blue he sliced it up. Of his hauberk he's torn the folds and cut, the steel and stock has through his body thrust. Dead is that count, he's no more time to run. Then say the Franks, Baron, an evil luck. Swift through the field, Turpin, the archbishop, passed. Such shaven crown has never else sung mass, who with his limbs such prowess might compass. To the pagan said, God send thee all that's bad, one thou hast slain for whom my heart is sad. So his good horse forth at his bidding ran. He struck him then on his shield Toledan, until he flings him dead on the green grass. From the other part was a pagan Grandones, son of Capuel, the king of Cappadoce. He sate his horse, the which he called Mamor. Never so swift was any bird in course. He's loosed the reins, and spurring on that horse, he's gone to strike Geran with all his force. The scarlet shield from his neck he's broken off, and all his sark thereafter has he torn. The ensign blew clean through his body's gone, until he flings him dead, on a high rock. His companion Gerard he's slain also, and Beringer and Guillaume of Santone. Next a rich duke he's gone to strike, or store, that held Valance and the honour of the Rhone. He's flung him dead, great joy the pagans show. Then say the Franks, of ours how many fall. The Count Rolands, his sword with blood is stained. Well has he heard what way the Franks complained. Such grief he has, his heart would split in twain. To the pagan says, God send thee every shame. One hast thou slain that dearly thou'lt repay. He spurs his horse that on with speed doth strain, which should forfeit they both together came. Grandony was both proof and valiant, and virtuous, a vassal combatant. Upon the way there he has met Rolant. He'd never seen, yet knew him at a glance, by the proud face and those fine limbs he had, by his regard and by his countenance. He could not help, but he grew faint thereat. He would escape, nothing avail he can. Struck him the count with so great virtue that, to the nose-plate he's all the helmet cracked. Sliced through the nose and mouth and teeth he has, Holbert close mailed and all the whole carcass, saddle of gold with plates of silver flanked, 
and of his horse has deeply scarred the back. He's slain them both, they'll make no more attack. The Spanish men in sorrow cry, Alack! Then say the Franks, He strikes well, our warrant. Marvellous is the battle in its speed, The Franks there strike with vigour and with heat, Cutting through wrists and ribs and shines indeed, Through garments to the lively flesh beneath. On the green grass the clear blood runs in streams. The pagans say, No more will suffer we. Terra Major, Mahomet's curse on thee. Beyond all men thy people are hardy. There was not one but cried then, Masili, canter, O king, thy succour now we need. Marvellous is the battle now and grand. The Franks there strike, their good brown spears in hand. Then had you seen such sorrowing of clans, So many a slain, shattered, and bleeding man, Biting the earth or piled there on their backs. The Sarazins cannot such loss withstand. Will they or nil, from off the field draw back, By lively force chase them away the Franks? Their martyrdom, his men's, Marseille has seen, So he bids sound his horns and his bousines, then canters forth with all his great army, canters before a Sarazin abysme. More felon none was in that company, cankered with guile and every felony. He fears not God, the son of St. Mary. Black is that man, as molten pitch that seethes. Better he loves murder and treachery than to have all the gold of Galaxy. Never has man behold him sport for glee, yet vassalage he's shown, and great folly. So is he dear to the felon king Marseille, Dragon he bears, to which his tribe rally. That archbishop could never love him, he, Seeing him there to strike he's very keen, Within himself he says all quietly, This Sarazin great heretic me seems, Rather i will die than not slay him clean, Neer did I love coward nor cowardice. That archbishop begins the fight again, sitting the horse which he took from Grosset, that was a king he had in Denmark slain. That charger is swift and of noble race, fine are his hooves, his legs are smooth and straight. Short are his thighs, broad crouper he displays, long are his ribs, aloft his spine is raised, white is his tail and yellow is his mane, little his ears and tawny all his face. No beast is there can match him in a race. That archbishop spurs on by vassalage. He will not pause, ere abysme he assail. So strikes that shield, is wonderfully arrayed, Whereon are stones, amethyst and topaz, Esterminals and carbuncles that blaze. A devil's gift it was, in Valmetes, Who handed it to the admiral Galifaz. So Turpin strikes, spares him not any way, after that blow he's worth no penny wage, the carcass he sliced, rib from rib away, so flings him down dead in an empty place. Then say the Franks, he has great vassalage with the archbishop, surely the cross is safe. The Count Rollins calls upon Oliver, so companion, witness you'll freely bear, the archbishop is a right good chevalier, None better is neath heaven anywhere. Well can he strike with lance and well with spear. Answers that count. Support to him will bear. Upon that word the Franks again make ye. Yeah. Hard are the blows, slaughter and suffering there. For Christians too, most bitter grief and care. Who could had seen Rollins and Oliver With their good swords to strike and to slaughter? And the archbishop lays on there with his spear. Those that are dead... Men well may hold them dear. In charters and in briefs is written clear, Four thousand fell, and more, the tales declare. Gainst four assaults easily did they fare, But then the fifth brought heavy griefs to bear. They all are slain, those Frankish chevaliers, Only three score, whom God was pleased to spare. Before these die, they'll sell them very dear. The Count Rolant great loss of his men sees, 
his companion Olivier calls and speaks. Sir and comrade, in God's name that you keeps, such good vassals you see lie here in heaps, for France the douce, fair country may we weep, of such barons long desolate shall be. Ah, king and friend, wherefore are you not here? O oh, Oliver, brother, can we achieve? And by what means our news to him repeat? Says Oliver, I know not how to seek. Rather I'd die than shame come of this feat. Then says Rolands, I'll win this Oliphant, if Charles here, where in the pass he stands, I pledge you now they will return, the Franks. Says Oliver, Great shame would come of that, and a reproach on every one, your clan, that shall endure while each lives in the land. When I implored you would not do this act, doing it now, no raise from me you'll have. So wind your horn, but not by courage rash, seeing that both your arms with blood are splashed. Answers that count. Fine blows I've struck them back. Then says Rolant, Strong it is now our battle. I'll wind my horn so the king hears it, Charles. Says Oliver, That act were not a vassal's. When I implored you, comrade, you were wrathful. Were the king here, we had not borne such damage, nor should we blame those with him there, his army. Says Oliver, now by my beard hereafter, if I may see my gentle sister Ald, she in her arms, I swear, shall never clasp you. Then says Rolands, Wherefore so wroth with me? He answers him, Comrade, it was your deed. Vassalage comes by sense and not folly. Prudence more worth is than stupidity. Here are Franks dead, all for your trickery. No more service to Carlon may we yield. My lord were here now, had you trusted me, and fought and won this battle then had we, taken or slain were the king Marsili. In your prowess, Rolands, no good we've seen. Charles the Great in vain your aid will seek, none such as he till God his judgment speak. Here must you die, and France in shame be steeped. Here perishes our loyal company, before this night great severance and grief. That archbishop has heard them, how they spoke. His horse he pricks with his fine spurs of gold. Coming to them, he takes up his reproach. Sir Oliver, and you, Sir Roland, both, for God, I pray, do not each other scold. No help it were to us the horn to blow, but, none the less, it may be better so. The king will come, with vengeance that he owes. These Spanish men never away shall go. Our Franks here, each descending from his horse, will find us dead, and limb from body torn. They'll take us hence on beers and litters borne. With pity and with grief for us they'll mourn. They'll bury each in some old minister close. No wolf nor swine nor dog shall gnaw our bones. Answers Roland, Sir, very well you spoke. Roland hath set the oliphant to his mouth. He grasps it well, and with great virtue sounds. High are those peaks, afar it rings and loud. Thirty great leagues they hear its echoes mount. So Charles heard, and all his comrades round. Then said that king, Battle they do, our counts. And Gwenolyn answered, Contrarious, That were a lie in any other mouth. The Count Rolands, with sorrow and with pangs, and with great pain sounded his oliphant. Out of his mouth the clear blood leapt and ran, about his brain the very temples cracked. Loud is its voice, that horn he holds in hand. Charles hath heard, where in the pass he stands, and Nimes hears, and listens all the Franks. Then says the king, I hear his horn, Rolands, he'll never sound, but he were in combat. Answers him Gawain's, it is no battle that. Now are you old, blossoming white and blanched, yet by such words you still appear infant. You know full well the great pride of Rolant. Marvel it is God stays so tolerant. Nobles he took, not waiting your command, 
Thence issued forth the Sarazins a band, with vassalage had fought against Roland. He slew them first with Durandal his brand, then washed their blood with water from the land, so what he'd done might not be seen of man. He for a hare goes all day, horn in hand, before his peers in foolish jest he brags. No race neath heaven and field him dare attack. So canter on. Nay, wherefore hold we back? Terra Major is far away, our land. The Count Rollance, though blood his mouth doth stain, and burst are both the temples of his brain, his oliphant he sounds with grief and pain. Charles hath heard, listen the Franks again. That horn, the king says, hath a mighty strain. Answers Duke Nimes, a baron blows with pain. Battle is there, indeed I see it plain. He is betrayed by one that still doth feign. Equip you, sir, cry out your old refrain, that noble band, go succour them amain. Enough you've heard how Rolant doth complain. That emperor hath bid them sound their horns. The Franks dismount and dress themselves for war. Put hauberks on, helmets and golden swords. Fine shields they have, and spears of length and force. Scarlet and blue and white their ensigns float. His charger mounts each baron of the host. They spur with haste as through the pass they go. Nor was there one, but thus to his neighbour spoke. Now ere he die, may we see Rolant so. Ranged by his side, we'll give some goodly blows. But what avail, they've stayed too long below. That even tide is light as was the day, Their armour shines beneath the sun's clear ray. Hauberks and helms throw off a dazzling flame, And blazoned shields flowered in bright array. Also their spears with golden ensigns gay, That emperor he canters on with rage, And all the Franks with wonder and dismay, There is not one can bitter tears restrain, And for Rolant they're very sore afraid. The king has bid them seize that county Guain, and charged with him the scullions of his train. The master cook he's called, Bescun by name. Guard me him well, his felony is plain, who in my house vile treachery has made. He holds him, and a hundred others takes from the kitchen, both good and evil knaves. Then Guain's beard and both his cheeks they shaved, and four blows each with their closed fists they gave. They trounced him well with cudgels and with staves, and on his neck they clasped an iron chain. So like a bear enchained they held him safe, on a pack-mule they set him in his shame, kept him till Charles should call for him again. High were the peaks, and shadowy and grand, the valleys deep, the rivers swiftly ran, trumpets they blew in rear and in the van, till all again answered that oliphant, that emperor counters with fury mad, and all the Franks dismay and wonder have. There is not one but weeps and waxes sad, and all pray God that he will guard Rolant, till in the field together they may stand. There by his side they'll strike as well they can. But what avail? No good there is in that. They're not in time. Too long have they held back. End of verses 88 to 138. Verses 139 to 176 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 139 to 176. In his great rage on canters Charlemagne. Over his sark his beard is flowing plain. Barons of France in haste they spur and strain. There is not one that can his wrath contain. 
that they are not with Roland the captain, whereas he fights the Saracens of Spain. If he be struck, will not one soul remain. God, sixty men are all now in his train. Never a king had better capitains. Roland regards the barren mountain sides, dead men of France he sees so many lie, and weeps for them as fits a gentle knight. Lords and barons, may God to you be kind, and all your souls redeem for paradise, and let you there mid holy flowers lie. Better vassals than you saw never I. Ever you've served me, and so long a time. By you Carlon hath conquered kingdoms wide. That emperor reared you for evil plight. Do land of France, O very precious clime, Lay desolate by such a sour exile. Barons of France, for me I've seen you die, And no support, no warrant could I find. God be your aid, who never yet hath lied. I must not fail now, brother, by your side, Save I be slain, for sorrow shall I die. Sir Companion, let us again go strike. The Count Rolands, back to the field, then hying, Holds Durandal, and like a vassal striking, Faldrin of Puy has through the middle sliced, With twenty-four of all they rated highest, Was never man for vengeance showed such liking, Even as a stag before the hounds goes flying, Before Rolands the pagans scatter frightened, Says the Archbishop, You deal now very wisely, Such valour should he show that is bred knightly, and beareth arms, and a good charger rideth. In battle should be strong, and proud, and sprightly, or otherwise he is not worth a shilling, should be a monk in one of those old minsters, where day by day he would pray for us poor sinners. Answers Rolant, Strike on, no quarter give them. Upon these words, Franks are again beginning. Very great loss they suffer then, the Christians. The man who knows, for him there's no prison, In such a fight with keen defence lays on, Wherefore the Franks are fiercer than lions. Marcille you'd seen go as a brave baron, Sitting his horse, the which he calls Gagnon. He spurs it well, going to strike Bevan, That was the land of Buon and of Dijon. His shield he breaks, his hauberk has undone, So flings him dead, without condition. Next he hath slain, Voreri and Yvonne, also with them Gerard of Rassillon. The Count Rollans, being not far him from, to the pagan says, Confound thee, our Lord God, so wrongfully you've slain my companions, a blow you'll take ere we apart be gone, and of my sword the name I'll bid you con. He goes to strike him as a brave baron, and his right hand the Count clean slices off, then takes the head of Jusselo the blonde, that was the son of King Marsilion. Pagans cry out, Assist us now, Mahom, God of our race, avenge us on Carlon. Into this land he sent us such felons that will not leave the fight before they drop. Says each to each, Nay, let us fly. Upon that word there fled an hundred thousand gone. Call them who may, they'll never more come on. But what avail, though fled be Marsilies, he's left behind his uncle, the al Khalif, who holds Alphern, Cartagine, Gamali, and Ethiop, a cursed land indeed. The blackamoors from there are in his keep, broad in the nose they are, and flat in the ear, fifty thousand and more in company. These canter forth with arrogance and heat. Then they cry out the pagan's rallying cheer, and Rolant says, Martyrdom will receive. Not long to live, I know it well, have we. Felon he's named that sells his body cheap. Strike on, my lords, with burnished swords and keen. Contest each inch your life and death between, that near by us do France in shame be steeped. When Charles my lord shall come into this field, such discipline of Saracens he'll see. For one of ours he'll find them dead fifteen. He will not fail, but bless us all in peace.
when Rollant sees those misbegotten men, who are more black than ink is on the pen, with no part white, only their teeth except. Then says that Count, I know now very well, that here to die we're bound as I can tell. Strike on the Franks, for so I recommend, says Oliver, who holds back is condemned. Upon those words the Franks to strike again. Franks are but few which, when the pagans know, among themselves comfort and pride they show, says each to each, wrong was that emperor. Their al Khalif upon a sorrel rode, and pricked it well with both his spurs of gold, struck Oliver behind on the backbone, his hauberk white into his body broke, clean through his breast the thrusting spear he drove. After he said, You've borne a mighty blow, Charles the Great should not have left you so. He's done us wrong, small thanks to him we owe. I've well avenged all ours on you alone. Oliver feels that he to die is bound, holds hold to Clare, whose steel is rough and brown, strikes the Alcalif on his helm's golden mount. Flowers and stones fall clattering to the ground, slices his head to the small teeth in his mouth. So brandishes his blade and flings him down. After, he says, Pagan, accursed be thou, Thou'lt never say that Charles forsakes me now, Nor to thy wife, nor any dame thou'st found, Thou'lt never boast, in lands where thou wast crowned, One pennyworth from me thou'st taken out, Nor damage wrought on me, nor any around. After, for aid, Roland, he cries aloud, Oliver feels that death is drawing nigh. To avenge himself, he hath no longer time. Through the great press most gallantly he strikes. He breaks their spears, their buckled shields doth slice. Their feet, their fists, their shoulders and their sides. Dismembers them, who so had seen that sigh. Dead in the field, one on another piled. Remember well a vassal brave he might. Charles Ensign, he'll not forget it quite. A loud and clear, Mon joy, again he cries. To call Rollins, his friend and peer, he tries. My companion, come hither to my side. With bitter grief we must us now divide. Then Rollant looked upon Olivier's face, which was all wan and colourless and pale, while the clear blood out of his body sprayed, Upon the ground gushed forth and ran away. God, said that count, what shall I do or say? My companion, gallant for such ill fate. Ne'er shall man be against thee could prevail. Ah, oh, France the deuce, henceforth art thou made waste Of vassals brave, confounded and disgraced. Our emperor shall suffer damage great. And with these words upon his horse he faints. You'd seen Rolant as soon there in his seat, And Oliver, who unto death doth bleed. So much he's bled, his eyes are dim and weak, Nor clear enough his vision, far or near, To recognise whatever man he sees. His companion, when each the other meets, Above the helm jewelled with gold he beats, Slicing it down from there to the nose-piece, But not his head, he's touched not brow nor cheek, at such a blow Rolant regards him keen, and asks of him in gentle tones and sweet. To do this thing, my comrade, did you mean? This is Rolant's who ever held you dear, and no mistrust was ever us between. Says Oliver, Now can I hear you speak? I see you not. May the Lord God you keep. I struck you now, and for your pardon plead. Answers Rolant's, I am not hurt, indeed. I pardon you before God's throne and here. Upon these words each to the other leans, and in such love you had their parting seen. Oliver feels death's anguish on him now, and in his head his two eyes swimming round. Nothing he sees, 
he hears not any sound. Dismounting then, he kneels upon the ground, proclaims his sins both firmly and aloud, clasps his two hands, heavenwards holds them out, prays God himself in paradise to allow. Blessings on Charles and on Douce France he vows, and his comrade Rolands to whom he's bound. Then his heart fails, his helmet nods and bows. Upon the earth he lays his whole length out, and he is dead, may stay no more that count. Rolands the brave mourns him with great profound. Nowhere on earth so sad a man you'd found. So Roland's friend is dead whom when he sees, face to the ground, and biting it with his teeth, begins to mourn in language very sweet. Unlucky friend, your courage was indeed. Together we have spent such days and years. No harmful thing twixt thee and me has been. Now thou art dead, and all my life a grief. And with these words again he swoons, that chief, upon his horse, which he calls Verlantif. Stirrups of gold support him underneath. He cannot fall whichever way he lean. Soon as Roland his senses wan and new, Recovering and turning from that soon. Bitter great loss appeared there in his view. Dead are the Franks, he'd all of them to lose, save the Archbishop and save Gaultier Delhoum. He is come down out of the mountains who, gainst Spanish men, made there a great ado. Dead are his men, for those the pagans slew. Will he or nil, along the vales he flew, and called Rolant to bring him succour soon. Ah, gentle count, brave soldier, where are you? For by thy side no fear I ever knew. Galter it is, who conquered male good, and nephew was to hoary old ruin. My vassalage thou ever thoughtest good, broken my spear and split my shield in two. Gone is the mail that on my hauberk grew. This body of mine eight lances have gone through. I'm dying, yet full price for life I took. Rolant has heard these words and understood, has spurred his horse, and on towards him drew. Grief gives Rolant's intolerance and pride. Through the great press he goes again to strike, to slay a score of Spaniards he contrives. Galter has six, the archbishop other five. The pagans say, Men, these of felon kind, Lordings, take care, they go not hence alive. Felon, he's named, that does not break their line, Recreant, who lets them any safety find. And so once more begin the hue and cry, From every part they come to break the line. Count Roland is a noble and brave soldier, Gauter del Hume's a right good chevalier. That archbishop hath shown good prowess there. None of them falls behind the other pair. Through the great press pagans they strike again, come on a foot a thousand Sarazens, and on horseback some forty thousand men. And well I know, to approach they never dare. Lances and spears they poise to hurl at them, arrows, barbs, darts and javelins in the air. With the first flight they've slain our Gaultier. Turpin of Reims has all his shield broken, and cracked his helm, he's wounded in the head. From his hauberk the woven mail they tear, in his body four spear wounds doth he bear, beneath him too his charges fallen dead. Great grief it was when that archbishop fell. Turpin of Reims hath felt himself undone, since that four spears have through his body come. Nimble and bold upon his feet he jumps, looks for Roland, and then towards him runs, saying this word, I am not overcome, while life remains no good vassal gives up. He's drawn our mace, whose steel was brown and rough, through the great press a thousand blows he struck. As Charles said, quarter he gave to none. He found him there, four hundred else among, wounded the most, speared through the middle some, also there were from whom the heads he'd cut, so tells the tale, he that was there says thus, 
the brave Saint Giles, whom God made marvellous, who charters wrote for the minster at Loam. Nothing he's heard that does not know this much. The Count Rolands has nobly fought and well, but he is hot and all his body sweats. Great pain he has and trouble in his head. His temples burst when he the horn sounded. But he would know if Charles will come to them. Takes the oliphant and feebly sounds again. That emperor stood still and listened then. My lords, said he, right evilly we fare. This day Rolands, my nephew, shall be dead. I hear his horn with scarcely any breath. Nimbly canter, whoever would be there. Your trumpets sound as many as ye bear. Sixty thousand so loud together blare. The mountains ring, the valleys answer them. The pagans hear, they think it not a jest. Says each to each, Calum doth us bestead. The pagans say, that emperor's at hand, we hear their sound, the trumpets of the Franks. If Charles come, great loss we then shall stand, and wars renewed, unless we slay Rolant. All Spain will lose, our own clear fatherland. Four hundred men of them in helmets stand, the best of them that might be in their ranks, make on Rolands a grim and fierce attack. Gainst these the Count had well enough in hand. The Count Rolands, when their approach he sees, is grown so bold and manifest and fierce. So long as he's alive he will not yield. He sits his horse, which men call Valentif, pricking him well with golden spurs beneath. Through the great press he goes, their line to meet, and by his side is the Archbishop Turpin. Now, friend, be gone, say pagans each to each. These Frankish men, their horns we plainly hear, Charles is at hand, that king in majesty. The Count Rolands has never loved cowards, nor arrogant, nor men of evil heart, nor chevalier that was not good vassal. That Archbishop Turpins he calls apart. Sir, you're afoot, and I my charger have. For love of you, here will I take my stand. Together we'll endure things good and bad. I'll leave you not, for no incarnate man. We'll give again these pagans their attack. The better blows are those from Durandal. Says the Archbishop, Shame on him that holds back. Charles is at hand, full vengeance he'll exact. The pagans say, Unlucky were we born, An evil day for us did this day dawn. For we have lost our peers and all our lords. Charles, his great host, once more upon us draws. Of Frankish men we plainly hear the horns. Monjoy, they cry, and great is their uproar. The Count Rolant is of such pride and force, he'll never yield to man of woman born. Let's aim at him, then leave him on the spot. And aim they did, with arrows long and short, lances and spears and feathered javelots. Count Rolant's shield they've broken through and bored, the woven mail have from his hauberk torn. But not himself, they've never touched his course. Valentif is in thirty places gored, Beneath the count he's fallen dead, that horse. Pagans are fled and leave him on the spot. The Count Rolant stands on his feet once more. Pagans are fled, enangered and enraged. Home into Spain with speed they make their way. The Count Rolands he has not given chase, For Valentif his charger they have slain. Will he or nil, on foot he must remain. To the Archbishop Turpins he goes with aid. He's from his head the golden helm unlaced, Taken from him his white hauberk away, And cut the gown in strips, was round his waist, On his great wounds the pieces of it placed. Then to his heart has caught him and embraced. On the green grass he has him softly laid. Most sweetly then to him has Rollart prayed. Ah, gentle sir, give me your leave, I say. Our companions, whom we so dear praised, are now all dead. We cannot let them stay. 
I will go seek and bring them to this place, arrange them here in ranks before your face. Said the archbishop, Go and return again. This field is yours and mine now. God be praised. So Rollance turns through the field all alone. Searching the vales and mountains, he is gone. He finds Gerard, Gerard his companion. Also he finds Beringer and Otton. There too he finds Anse and Sanson, And finds Gerard the old of Rossillon. By one and one he's taken those barons. To the archbishop with each of them he comes. Before his needs arranges every one. That archbishop he cannot help but sob. He lifts his hand, gives benediction. After he said, Unlucky lords your lot, But all your souls he'll lay, our glorious lord, In paradise his holy flowers upon. For my own death such anguish now I've got, I shall not see him, our rich emperor. So Roland turns, goes through the field in quest, his companion Olivier finds at length. He has embraced him close against his breast. To the archbishop returns as he can best. Upon a shield he's laid him by the rest. And the archbishop has then absolved and blessed. Whereon his grief and pity grow afresh. Then says Rollanz, Fair comrade Olivier, You were the son of the good Count Rainier, Who held the march by the Vale of Runier to shatter spears through buckled shields to bear, and from hauberks the mail to break and tear, proof men to lead and prudent counsel share, gluttons in field to frighten and conquer. No land has known a better chevalier. The Count Rollanz, when dead he saw his peers, and Oliver he held so very dear grew tender and began to shed a tear. Out of his face the colour disappeared. No longer could he stand for so much grief. Will he or nil, he swooned upon the field. Said the archbishop, Unlucky lord indeed. When the archbishop beheld him swoon, Rolant, never before such bitter grief he'd had, Stretching his hand, he took that oliphant. Through Ronceval a little river ran. He would go there, fetch water for Rolant. Went step by step, to stumble soon began. So feeble he is, no further fare he can. For too much blood he's lost, and no strength has. Ere he has crossed an acre of the land, his heart grows faint. He falls down forwards, and death comes to him with very cruel pangs. The Count Rollanz wakes from his swoon once more, climbs to his feet, his pains are very sore, looks down the vale, looks to the hills above, on the green grass beyond his companions, he sees him lie, that noble old baron. Tis the archbishop, whom in his name wrought God, there he proclaims his sins and looks above, joins his two hands to heaven, holds them forth, and paradise prays God to him to accord. Dead is Turpin, the warrior of Shalom, in battles great and very rare sermons, against pagans, ever a champion. God grant him now his benediction. The Count Rolant sees the Archbishop lie dead, sees the bowels out of his body shed, and sees the brains that surge from his forehead. Between his two armpits upon his breast, crossways he folds those hands so white and fair, then mourns aloud as was the custom there. Thee gentle sir, chevalier nobly bred, to the glorious celestial I commend. Ne'er shall man be that will him serve so well, since the apostles was never such prophet to hold the law and draw the hearts of men, now may your soul no pain nor sorrow ken, finding the gates of paradise open.
Then Rolands feels that death to him draws near, for all his brain is issued from his ears. He prays to God that he will call the peers, bids Gabriel, the angel, to himself appear, takes the olifant that no reproach shall hear, and Durandal in the other hand he wields. Further than might a crossbow's arrow speed, goes towards Spain into a fallow field, climbs on a cliff, where, under two fair trees, four terraces of marble wrought he sees. There he falls down and lies upon the green. He swoons again, for death is very near. High are the peaks, the trees are very high. Four terraces of polished marble shine. On the green grass Count Rolant swoons thereby. A Sarazin him all the time espies, who feigning death among the others hides. Blood hath his face and all his body died. He gets a foot, running towards him highs. Fair was he, strong and of a courage high. A mortal hate he's kindled in his pride. He seized Rolant, and the arms were at his side. Charles nephew, he said, here conquered lies. To Araby I'll bear this sword as prize. As he drew it, something the Count descried. So Roland felt his sword was taken forth, opened his eyes, and this word to him spoke. Thou'rt never one of ours, full well I know. Took the oliphant, that he would not let go, struck him on the helm, that jeweled was with gold and broke its steel, his skull and all his bones. Out of his head both the two eyes he drove. Dead at his feet he has the pagan throne. After he said, Culvert, thou wert too bold, or right or wrong of my sword-seizing hold, they'll dub thee fool to whom the tale is told. But my great one, my oliphant, I broke, fallen from it the crystal and the gold. Then Rolands feels that he has lost his sight, Climbs to his feet, uses what strength he might. In all his face the colour is grown white. In front of him a great brown boulder lies, Where on ten blows with grief and rage he strikes. The steel cries out, but does not break outright. And the Count says, St. Mary, be my guide. Good Durandal, unlucky is your plight. I've need of you no more. Spent is my pride. We in the field have won so many fights, combating through so many regions wide, that Charles holds, whose beard is hoary white. Be you not his that turns from any in flight. A good vassal has held you this long time. Never shall France the free behold his light. Rolant hath struck the Sardonyx terrace, the steel cries out, but broken is no ways. So when he sees, he never can it break. Within himself begins he to complain. Ah, oh, Durandal, white art thou, clear of stain, Beneath the sun reflecting back his rays. In Morien was Charles in the vale, When from heaven God by his angel bade. Him give thee to a count and capitain, Girt thee on me, that noble king and great, I won for him with thee, Anjou, Bretagne, and won for him with thee, Peto, the main, and Normandy, the free for him I gained, also with thee, Provence and Equitaine, and Lombardy and all the whole Romaine. I won Bever, all Flanders in the plain, also Burguine, and all the whole Priene, Constantinople, that homage to him pays, in Saisony all is as he ordains. With thee I won him Scotland, Ireland, Wales, England also, where he his chamber makes. Won I with thee so many countries strange, that Charles holds, whose beard is white with age, for this sword's sake sorrow upon me weighs. Rather I'll die than it mid pagan stay. Let God, Father, never let France be shamed. Rolant his stroke on a dark stone repeats, and more of it breaks off than I can speak. The sword cries out, yet breaks not in the least. 
Back from the blow into the air it leaps, destroy it can he not, which when he sees, within himself he makes a plaint most sweet. Ah, Durandal, most holy, fair indeed, relics enough thy golden hilt conceals, St. Peter's tooth, the blood of St. Basile, some of the hairs of my lord, St. Denise, some of the robe was worn by St. Mary. It is not right that pagans should thee seize, for Christian men your use shall ever be, nor any man's that worketh cowardice. Many broad lands with you have I retrieved, which Charles holds, who hath the great white beard. Wherefore that king so proud and rich is he. But Roland felt that death had made a way, down from his head till on his heart it lay. Beneath a pine running in haste he came, on the green grass he lay there on his face, his oliphant and sword beneath him placed, turning his head towards the pagan race. Now this he did in truth, that Charles might say, as he desired and all the Franks his race, Ah, gentle Count, conquering he was slain. He owned his faults often and every way, and for his sins his glove to God upraised. But Roland feels he's no more time to seek. Looking to Spain, he lies on a sharp peak, and with one hand upon his breast he beats. Mea culpa, God, by thy virtues clean me from my sins, the mortal and the mean, which from the hour that I was born have been until this day when life is ended here. Holds out his glove towards God as he speaks. Angels descend from heaven on that scene. The Count Rollands, beneath a pine he sits, turning his eyes towards Spain he begins, remembering so many diverse things, so many lands where he went conquering, and France the Deuce, the heroes of his kin, and Charlemagne, his lord who nourished him. Nor can he help but weep and sigh at this, but his own self he's not forgotten him. He owns his faults and God's forgiveness bids, very father, in whom no falsehood is, Saint Lazaron from death thou didst remit, And Daniel save from the lion's pit, My soul and me preserve from all peril, And from the sins I did in life commit. His right hand glove, to God he offers it, Saint Gabriel from his hand hath taken it, Over his arm his head bows down and slips, He joins his hands, and so is life finished. God sent him down his angel cherubim, and St. Michael we worship in peril, and by their side St. Gabriel alit, so the Count's soul they bear to paradise. End of verses 139 to 176. Verses 177 to 186 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 177 to 186. Roland is dead, his soul to him God bear, the emperor to Roncesvalles doth fare. There was no path nor passage anywhere, nor of waste ground, no ell nor foot to spare, without a Frank or pagan lying there. Charles cries aloud, Where are you, nephew fair? Where's the archbishop and that Count Olivier? Where is Gerard and his comrade Gerard? Otis the Duke and the Count Berengier, and Ivory and Ive, so dear they were. What has become of Gascon and Gillier, Sanson the Duke, and Anse the Fierce? Where's old Gerard of Roussillon? Oh, where, the dozen peers I left behind me here. But what avail, since none can answer bear? God, 
says the king, now well may I despair. I was not here the first assault to share. Seeming enraged, his beard the king doth tear. Weep from their eyes, barons and chevaliers. A thousand score they swoon upon the earth. Duke Nimes for them was moved with pity rare. No chevalier nor baron is there who pitifully weeps not for grief and duel. They mourn their sons, their brothers, their nephews, and their liege lords and trusty friends and true. Upon the ground a many of them swoon. Thereon Duke Nimes doth act with wisdom proof. First before all he said to the emperor, See beforehand a league from us or two, from the highways dust rising in our view. Pagans are there, and many them too. Canter, therefore, vengeance upon them do. Ah, oh, God, says Charles, so far are they removed. Do right by me, my honour still renew. They've torn from me the flower of France the deuce. The king commands Gebrin and Otun, Tedbolt of Reims, also the Count Milun. Guard me this field, these hills and valleys too. Let the dead lie, all as they are, unmoved. Let not approach lion, nor any brute. Let not approach esquire, nor any groom. For I forbid that any come thereto, until God will that we return anew. These answer him sweetly, their love to prove. Right, Emperor, dear sire, so will we do. A thousand knights they keep in retinue. That Emperor bids trumpets sound again, then canters forth with his great host so brave, of Spanish men whose backs are turned their way, Franks one and all continue in their chase. When the king sees the light at even fade, on the green grass dismounting as he may, he kneels aground, to God the Lord doth pray, that the sun's course he will for him delay, put off the night, and still prolong the day. An angel then, with him should reason make, nimbly enough appeared to him and spake. Charles, canter on, light needs not thou await, the flower of France, as God knows well, is slain. Thou canst be avenged upon that crimeful race. Upon that word mounts the emperor again. For Charlemagne a great marvel God planned, making the sun still in his course to stand. So pagans fled, and chased them well the Franks, through the valley of shadows close in hand. Toward Saragoose by force they chased them back, and as they went with killing blows attacked, barred their highways, and every path they had, the river Sibra before them reared its bank. T'was very deep, marvellous current ran, no barge thereon, nor Drummond, nor Caland. A god of theirs invoked they, Tervagant, and then leapt in, but there no warrant had. The armed men more weighty were for that, many of them down to the bottom sank, downstream the rest floated as they might hap. So much water the luckiest of them drank, that all were drowned with marvellous keen pangs. An evil day, cry Franks, ye saw Roland. When Charles sees that pagans all are dead, some of them slain, the greater part drowned, whereby great spoils his chevaliers collect. That gentle king upon his feet descends, kneels on the ground, his thanks to God presents. When he once more rise, the sun is set. Says the emperor, time is to pitch our tents, to Roncesvalles too late to go again. Our horses are worn out and founded. Unsaddle them, take bridles from their heads, and through these meads let them refreshment get. Answer the Franks. Sire, you have spoken well. That emperor hath chosen his bivouac, the Franks dismount in those deserted tracts, their saddles take from off their horses' backs, bridles of gold from off their heads unstrap, let them go free, there is enough fresh grass, no services can they render them save that, who is most tired sleeps on the ground stretched flat, upon this night no sentinels keep watch. That emperor is lying in a mead, by his head so brave he's placed his mighty spear. On such a night unarmed he will not be. He's donned his white hauberk with broidery, 
has laced his helm, jewelled with golden beads, girt on joyeuse, there never was its peer, whereon each day thirty fresh hues appear. All of us know that lance, and well may speak, whereby our Lord was wounded on the tree. Charles, by God's grace, possessed its point of steel, his golden hilt he enshrined it underneath. By that honour and by that sanctity, the name Joyeuse was for that sword decreed. Barons of France may not forgetful be. Whence comes the ensign, Monjoy, they cry at need. Wherefore no race against them can succeed. Clear was the night, the moon shone radiant. Charles laid him down, but sorrow for Roland, and Oliver, most heavy on him he had. Four's dozen peers, for all the Frankish band, he had left dead in bloody Roncesvalles. He could not help but wept and waxed mad, and prayed to God to be their soul's warrant. Weary that king, or grief, he's very sad. He falls on sleep, he can no more withstand. Through all those meads they slumber then, the Franks. Is not a horse can any longer stand, Who would eat grass, he takes it lying flat. He has learned much, can't understand their pangs. Charles, like a man worn out with labour, slept. Saint Gabriel, the Lord to him, hath sent, Whom as a guard o'er the emperor he set, Stood all night long that angel by his head. In a vision announced he to him then a battle should be fought against him yet. Significance of griefs demonstrated. Charles looked up towards the sky, and there thunders and winds and blowing gales beheld, and hurricanes and marvellous tempests. Lightnings and flames he saw in readiness, that speedily on all his people fell. Apple and ash, their spear-shafts all burned, also their shields, e'en the golden bosses, crumbled the shafts of their trenchant lances, crushed their hauberks and all their steel helmets, his chevaliers he saw in great distress. Bears and leopards would feed upon them next, adversaries, dragons, wyverns, serpents, griffins were there, thirty thousand no less. Nor was there one but on some frank it set, and the franks cried, Ah, Charlemagne, give help! Wherefore the king much grief and pity felt. He'll go to them, but was in due rest kept. Out of a wood came a great lion then. T'was very proud and fierce and terrible. His body dear sought out and on him leapt, Each in his arms wrestling the other held. But he knew not which conquered nor which fell. The emperor woke not at all, but slept. And after that another vision came, him seemed in France, at Aix on a terrace, and that he held a bruin by two chains. Out of Ardennes saw thirty bears that came, and each of them words as a man might, spake, said to him, Sire, give him to us again, it is not right that he with you remain, he's of our kin and we must lend him aid. A hurry affair ran out of his palace, among them all the greatest bear assailed, and on the green grass beyond his friends some way. There saw the king marvellous give and take, but he knew not which fell, nor which or came. The angel of God so much to him made plain. Charles slept on to the clear dawn of day. End of verses 177 to 186 Verses 187 to 214 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 187 to 214. King Marsilis, fleeing to Saragusse, Dismounted there beneath an olive cool, His sword and sark and helm aside he put, On the green grass lay down in shame and gloom. For his right hand he'd lost, T'was clean cut through, Such blood he'd shed in anguish keen he swooned. 
before his face his lady Bramimund bewailed and cried with very bitter rue. Twenty thousand and more around him stood, all of them cursed Carlun and Franz the Deuce. Then Apollon in his grotto they surround, and threaten him, and ugly words pronounce. Such shame on us, vile God, why bringest thou? This is our king, wherefore dost him confound? Who served thee off, ill recompense hath found. Then they take off his sceptre and his crown, with their hands hang him from a column down. Among their feet trample him on the ground, with great cudgels they battle him and trounce. From Tervagant his carbuncle they impound, and Mahomet into a ditch fling out, where swine and dogs defile him and devour. Out of his soon awakens Masilis, and has him borne his vaulted roof beneath. Many colours were painted there to see, and Bramimund laments for him, the queen. Tearing her hair, Katif herself she cleeps. Also these words cries very loud and clear, Ah, Saragus, henceforth forlorn thou'lt be, Of the fair king that had thee in his keep. All those our gods have wrought great felony, Who in battle this morning failed at need. That admiral will show his cowardice, Unless he fight against that race hardy, who are so fierce, for life they take no heed, that emperor with his blossoming beard hath vassalage and very high folly. Battle to fight, he will not ever flee. Great grief it is, no man may slay him clean. That emperor, by his great majesty, full seven years in Spain now has he been, and castles there and many cities seized. King Marsilies was therefore sore displeased, in the first year he sealed and sent his brief to Balagant, into Babylonie. T'was the admiral, old in antiquity, that clean outlived Omer and Virgili. To Saragus with succour bade him speed, for, if he failed, Marseille his gods would leave. All his idols he worshipped formerly, he would receive blessed Christianity, and reconciled to Charlemagne would be. Long time that one came not, far off was he. Through forty realms he did his tribes rally, his great drummons he made them all ready, barges and skiffs and ships and galleries, neath Alexandra a haven next the sea. In readiness he gat his whole navy. That was in May, first summer of the year. All of his hosts he launched upon the sea. Great are the hosts of that opposed race, with speed they sail, they steer and navigate. High on their yards, at their mast heads they place, lanterns enough, and carbuncles so great, thence, from above, such light they dissipate, the seas more clear at midnight than by day. And when they come into the land of Spain, all that country lightens and shines again. Of their coming Marseille has heard the tale. The pagan race would never rest, but come out of the sea where the sweet waters run. They leave Marbury, they leave behind Marbrus. Upstream by seaward doth all their navy turn. Lanterns they have, and carbuncles enough, that all night long and very clearly burn. Upon that day they come to Saragus. Clear is that day, and the sun radiant. Out of his barge issues their admiral. Espanolis goes forth at his right hand. Seventeen kings follow him in a band. Counts, too, and dukes, I cannot tell of that. Where in a field, midway, a laurel stands. On the green grass they spread a white silk mat. Set a fold-stool there, made of oliphant. Sits him thereon, the pagan baligant, And all the rest in rows about him stand. The lord of them speaks before any man. Listen to me, free knights and valiant. Charles the king, the emperor of the Franks, shall not eat bread, save when that I command. Throughout all Spain great war with me he's had. I will go seek him now into douche France. I will not cease while I'm a living man, till be slain or fall between my hands. Upon his knee his right hand glove he slaps. He is fast bound by all that he has said. He will not fail, for all the gold neath him, but go to Aix, where Charles' court is held. 
His men applaud, for so they counselled. After he called two of his chevaliers, one Clarifan and the other Clarien. You are the sons of King Maltrayen, freely was, want my messages to bear. You I command to Saragus to fare. Massilion on my part you shall tell, against the Franks I'm come to give him help. Find I their host, great battle shall be there. Give him this glove that stitched with golden thread. On his right hand let it be worn and held. This little wand of fine gold take as well. Bid him come here his homage to declare. To France I'll go and war with Charles again. Save at my feet he kneel and mercy beg. Save all the laws of Christians he forget. I'll take away the crown from off his head. Answer pagans, sire, you say very well. Said Baligant, but canter now, barons, take one the wand, and the other one the glove. These answer him, Dear Lord, it shall be done. Canter so far to Saragoose they come, pass through ten gates across four bridges run, through all the streets wherein the burghers crowd, when they draw nigh the citadel above, from the palace they hear a mighty sound. About that place are seen pagans enough, who weep and cry with grief a waxen wood and curse their gods, Tervagana Mahom, and Apollon, from whom no help is come. Says each to each, Caitiffs, what shall be done? For upon us confusion vile is come. Now have we lost our King Marsilian, for yesterday his hand Count Roland's cut. We'll have no more fair Jerusalem his son. The whole of Spain henceforward is undone. Both messengers on the terrace dismount. Horses they leave under an olive tree, which by the reins to Saracens do lead. Those messengers have wrapped them in their weeds, to the palace they climb the topmost steep. When there come in the vaulted roof beneath, Massilium with courtesy they greet. May Mahomet, who all of us doth keep, and Tervagan and our lord Apolline, preserve the king and guard from harm the queen. Says Bramimund, Great foolishness I hear, those gods of ours in cowardice are steeped. In Ronceval they wrought an evil deed. Our chevaliers they let be slain in heaps. My lord they failed in battle in his need. Never again will he his right hand see. For that which count Rolands hath made him bleed, all our whole Spain shall be for Charles to keep. Miserable! What shall become of me? Alas, that I've no man to slay me clean! says Clarion, My lady, say not that, we're messengers from pagan Baligant. To Marsilies, he says, he'll be warrant, so sends him here his glove, also this wand. Vessels we have, are moored by Sira's bank, barges and skiffs and galleys four thousand, dromons are there, I cannot speak of that. Our admiral is wealthy and puissant, and Charlemagne, he will go seek through France, and quittance give him, dead or recreant. Says Bramimund, Unlucky journey that, far nearer here you'll light upon the Franks, for seven years he stayed now in this land. That emperor is bold and combatant, rather he'll die than from the field draw back. No king neath him above a child he ranks. Charles hath no fear for any living man. Says Marsilies the king, Now let that be. To the messengers, Sirs, pray you, speak to me. I am held fast by death, as ye may see. No son have I nor daughter to succeed. That one I had, they slew him yester eve. Bid you, my lord, he come to see me here. Writes over Spain that admiral hath he. My claim to him, if he will take, I yield. But from the Franks he then must set her free. Gainst Charlemagne I'll show him strategy. Within a month from now he'll conquered be. Of Saragoose you'll carry him the keys. He'll go not hence, say, if he trusts in me. They answer him, Sir, tis the truth you speak. Then says Marsile, The Emperor, Charles the Great, Hath slain my men, and all my land laid waste. My cities are broken and violate. He lay this night upon the river Sebra, I've counted well, tis seven leagues away. Bid the admiral, 
leading his host this way, do battle here, this word to him convey. Gives them the keys of Saragoose her gates, both messengers their leave of him do take. Upon that word bow down and turn away. Both messengers did on their horses mount, from that city nimbly they issued out. Then, sore afraid, the admiral they sought, to whom the keys of Saragoose they brought. Says Baligant, Speak now, what have ye found? Where's Marsilies to come to me was bound? Says Clarion, To death he's stricken down, the emperor was in the pass but now. To France the deuce he would be homeward bound. Rearward he set, to save his great honour. His nephew there installed, Rollins the Count, and Oliver, the dozen peers around, a thousand score of Franks in armour found, Marsile the king fought with them there, so proud. He and Rollins upon that field did joust, with Durandal he dealt him such a clout, from his body he cut the right hand down. His son is dead, in whom his heart was bound, and the barons that service to him vowed. Fleeing he came, he could no more hold out. That emperor has chased him well enow. The king implores, you'll hasten with succour, yields to you Spain, his kingdom and his crown. And Baligant begins to think and frowns. Such grief he has, doth nearly him confound. Sir Admiral, said to him Clarienne, in Roncesvalles was yesterday battle. Dead is Roland and that Count Oliver, the dozen peers whom Charles so cherished, and of their Franks are twenty thousand dead. King Marsilies of his right hand bereft, and the emperor chased him anow from thence. Throughout this land no chevalier is left, but he be slain or drowned in Sira's bed. By riverside the Franks have pitched their tents, into this land so near to us they've crept. But if you will, grief shall go with them hence. And Baligant looked on him proudly then, and his courage grew joyous and content. From the fold-stool upon his feet he leapt, then cried aloud, Barons, too long ye've slept! Forth from your ship's issue, mount, canter well! If he flee not, that Charlemagne the eld, King Marsilies shall somehow be avenged. For his right hand I'll pay him back and head. Pagan Arabs out of their ships issue, then mount upon their horses and their mules, and canter forth, nay, what more might they do? Their admiral, by whom they all were ruled, called up to him Gemelfin, whom he knew. I give command of all my hosts to you. On a brown horse mounted, as he was used, and in his train he took with him four dukes. Cantered so far, he came to Saragoose. Dismounted on a floor of marble blue, where four counts were, who by his stirrup stood, up by the steps the palace came into. To meet him there came running Bramimund, who said to him, Accursed from the womb, that in such shame my sovereign lord I lose. Fell at his feet, that admiral her took. In grief they came up into Marsile's room. King Marsilies, when he sees Baligant, calls to him then two Spanish Sarazans. Take me by the arms, and so lift up my back. One of his gloves he takes in his left hand. Then says Marsil, Sire, king and admiral, quittance I give you here of all my land, with Saragoose, and the honour thereto hangs. Myself I've lost, my army every man. He answers him, Therefore the more I'm sad, no long discourse together may we have. Full well I know, Charles waits not our attack. I take the glove from you in spite of that. He turned away in tears, such grief he had. Down by the steps, out of the palace ran, mounted his horse, to his people galloped back. Cantered so far, he came before his band. From hour to hour then, as he went, he sang, Pagans, come on, already flee the Franks. In morning time, when the dawn breaks at last, Awakened is that emperor, Charles, Saint Gabriel, who on God's part him guards, 
raises his hand, the sign upon him marks. Rises the king, his arms aside his cast. The others then, through all the host, disarm. After they mount, by virtue, canter fast through those long ways and through those roads so large. They go to see the marvellous damage in Ronceval, there where the battle was. In Ronceval is Charles entered, begins to weep for those he finds there dead, says to the Franks, My lords, restrain your steps, since I myself alone should go ahead, for my nephew whom I would find again. At Aix I was upon the feast Noel, vaunted them there my valiant chevaliers, of battles great and very hot contests. With reason thus I heard Roland speak then, he would not die in any foreign realm, ere he'd surpassed his peers and all his men. To the foe's land he would have turned his head, conqueringly his gallant life he'd end. Further than one a little wand could send, before the rest he's on a peak mounted. When the emperor went seeking his nephew, he found the grass and every flower that bloomed, turned scarlet, with our baron's blood imbrued. Pity he felt, he could but weep for rue. Beneath two trees he climbed the hill and looked, and Roland's strokes on three terraces knew, on the green grass saw lying his nephew. Tis nothing strange that Charles' anger grew, dismounted then and went, his heart was full, in his two hands the Count's body he took. With anguish keen he fell on him and swooned. That emperor is from his swoon revived, names the duke and the Count Asseline, Geoffrey d'Anjou and his brother Thierry, take up the king, bear him beneath a pine. There on the ground he sees his nephew lie, most sweetly then begins he to repine. Roland, my friend, may God to thee be kind. Never beheld any man such a knight, so to engage and so to end a fight. Now my honour is turned into decline. Charles swoons again. He cannot stand upright. Charles the king returned out of his swoon. Him in their hands four of his barons took. He looked to the earth saw lying his nephew, all colourless his lusty body grew. He turned his eyes, were very shadowful. Charles complained in amity and truth, Roland, my friend, God lay thee mid the blooms of paradise, among the glorious. Thou camest to Spain in evil tide, seigneur. Day shall not dawn, for thee I've no dollar. How perishes my strength and my valour! None shall I have now to sustain my honour. I think I've not one friend neath heaven's roof. Kinsmen I have, but none of them so proof. He tore his locks till both his hands were full. Five score thousand francs had such great dollar. There was not one but sorely wept for rue. Roland, my friend, to France I will away. When at Lome I'm in my hall again, strange men will come from many far domains, who'll ask me, where's that count, that capitaine? I'll say to them that he is dead in Spain. In bitter grief henceforward shall I reign. Day shall not dawn, I weep not nor complain. Roland, my friend, fair youth that bast the bell, when I arrive at Aix in my chapelle, men coming there will ask what news I tell. I'll say to them, marvellous news and fell. My nephew's dead, who won for me such realms. Against me then the Saxon will rebel, hunger, bulger, and many hostile men, Romain, Puyane, all those are in Parlane, and in Afrique, and those in Califern. Afresh then will my pain and sufferance swell, for who will lead my armies with such strength, when he is slain, that all our days us led? Ah, oh, France the deuce, now art thou deserted. Such grief I have that I would fain be dead. All his white beard he hath begun to rend, tore with both hands the hair out of his head. Five score thousand francs swooned on the earth and fell.
Rolant, my friend, God show thee his mercy. In paradise repose the soul of thee. Who hath thee slain, exile for France decreed? I'll live no more, so bitter is my grief. For my household, who have been slain for me. God grant me this, the son of Saint Mary. Ere I am come to the master pass of seas, From my body my soul at length go free. Among their souls let mine in glory be, And let my flesh upon their flesh be heaped. Still his white beard he tears, and his eyes weep. Duke Name says, his wrath is great indeed. Sire, Emperor, Geoffrey d'Anjou implored, let not your grief to such excess be wrought. Bid that our men through all this field be sought, whom those of Spain have in the battle caught, in a charnel command that they be borne. Answered the king, sound then upon your horn. Geoffrey d'Anjou upon his trumpet sounds, as Charles bade them, all the Franks dismount, all of their friends whose bodies they have found, to a charnel speedily they bring down, bishops there are, and abbots there enow, canons and monks, vicars with shaven crowns, absolution in God's name they've pronounced, incense and myrrh with precious gums they've ground, and lustily they've swung the censers round. With honour great they've laid them in the ground. They've left them there. What else might they do now? That emperor sets Rolant on one side, and Oliver and the archbishop Turpine. Their bodies bids open before his eyes, and all their hearts in silken veils to wind, and set them in coffers of marble white. After, they take the bodies of those knights, each of the three is wrapped in a deer's hide. They're washing well in allspice and in wine. The king commands Tebot and Jabouin, Marquis Auton, Milun the Count besides, along the road in three wagons to drive. They're covered well with carpets galazine. Now to be off with that emperor Charles, when pagans, lo, come surging the vanguard, Two messengers come from their ranks forward, from the admiral bring challenge to combat. Tis not yet time, proud king, that thou depart. Lo, Balagant comes cantering afterward. Great are the hosts he leads from Arab parts. This day we'll see if thou hast vassalage. Charles the king, his snowy beard has clasped, remembering his sorrow and damage. Haughtily then his people all regards, in a loud voice he cries with all his heart, Barons and Franks, to horse, I say, to arms! End of verses 187 to 214Verses 215 to 272 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 215 to 272. First before all was armed that emperor, nimbly enough his iron sark endued, laced up his helm, girt on his sword joyeuse. Out shone the sun, that dazzling light it threw, hung from his neck a shield was of Girund, and took his spear, was fashioned at Blandoun. On his good horse then mounted Tonsandou, which he had won at the ford below Marsoun, when he flung dead Malpalin of Nerboon. Let go the reins, spurred him with either foot, five score thousand behind him as he flew, calling on God and the Apostle of Rome. Through all the field dismount the Frankish men, five score thousand and more, they arm themselves. The gear they have enhances much their strength, their horses swift, their arms are fashioned well. Mounted they are, and fight with great science, find they that host, battle they'll render them. Their gonfalon flutter above their helms. 
When Charles sees the fair aspect of them, he calls to him Josserin of Provence, Naimon the Duke, with Antelm of Mayence. In such vassals should man have confidence, whom not to trust were surely want of sense, unless the Arabs of coming here repent, then Roland's life, I think, will dearly sell. Answers Duke names, God grant us his consent. Charles hath called Rabel and Grinimont. Thus said the king, My lords, you I command to take their place, Olivier and Roland, one bear the sword and the other the oliphant, so canter forth ahead before the van, and in your train take fifteen thousand francs, young bachelors that are most valiant, as many more shall after them advance, when Gabriel shall lead, also Laurent. Names the duke and the count Josserin, Go to adjust these columns in their ranks. Find they that host, they'll make a grand attack. Of Franks the first columns made ready there, After those two a third they next prepare. In it are set the vassals of Bivier, Some thousand score high-prized chevaliers. Never was lost the battle, were they there. Charles for no race neath heaven hath more care, Save those of France, who realms for him conquered. The Danish chief, the warrior Count Ogre, shall lead that troop, for haughty is their heir. Three columns now he has, the Emperor Charles, names the Duke a fourth next sets apart, of good barons, endowed with vassalage. Germans they are, come from the German march, a thousand score, as all said afterward. They're well equipped with horses and with arms, rather they'll die than from the battle pass. They shall be led by Hermans, Duke of Trace, who'll die before he's any way coward. Names the Duke and the Count Josserin, the fifth column have mustered of Normans, a thousand score, or so say all the Franks. Well armed are they, their horses charge and prance, rather they'll die than e'er be recreant. No race neath heaven can more in the field compass. Richard the old, lead them in the field he shall. He'll strike hard there with his good trenchant lance. The sixth column is mustered of Bretons, thirty thousand chevaliers therein come. These canter in the manner of barons, upright their spears, their ensigns fastened on. The overlord of them is named Oidon, who doth command the county Nevelon, Tedbolt of Rheims, and the Marquis Auton. Lead ye my men by my commission. That emperor hath now six columns here, names the duke, the seventh next prepares, of Paytavin and barons from Alvern. Forty thousand chevaliers might be there, their horses good, their arms are all most fair. They're neath a cliff in a vale by themselves. With his right hand King Charles hath them blessed, them Josserin shall lead, also God sounds. And the eighth column hath names made ready, Tis of Flamengs, and barons out of Frise, Forty thousand and more good knights are these, Nor lost by them has any battle been. And the king says, These shall do my service. Between Rembolt and Harmon of Galice Shall they be led for all their chivalry. Between Naimon and Josserin the Count Are prudent men for the ninth column found, Of Notharangs and those out of Bourgogne, Fifty thousand good knights they are, by count, In helmets laced and sarks of iron brown, Strong are their spears, short are the shafts cut down. If the Arabids demur not, but come out, And trust themselves to these, they'll strike them down. Thierry the Duke shall lead them, of Argon. The tenth column is of barons of France, Five score thousand of our best capitans, Lusty of limb and proud of countenance, Snowy their heads are, and their beards are blanched. In double sarks and in hauberks they're clad, Girt on their sides Frankish and Spanish brands, And noble shields of diverse cognizance. Soon as they mount, the battles they demand, Monjoy they cry, with them goes Charlemagne. Geoffrey d'Anjou carries that oriflamme, St. Peter's t'was, and bear the name Roman. But on that day Monjoy by change it gat. That emperor down from his horse descends, To the green grass kneeling, his face he bends. 
then turns his eyes towards the Orient, calls upon God with heartiest intent. Very Father, this day do me defend, who to Jonah's succour didst truly send, out of the whale's belly, where he was pent, and who didst spare the king of Nineveh, and Daniel for marvellous torment, when he was caged within the lion's den, and three children all in fire ardent, thy gracious love to me be here present. In thy mercy, if it please thee, consent, that my nephew Rolant I may avenge. When he had prayed, upon his feet he stepped, with the strong mark of virtue signed his head. Upon his swift charger the king mounted, while Josarin and Names his stirrup held. He took his shield, his trenchant spear he kept. Fine limbs he had, both gallant and well set. Clear was his face and filled with good intent. Vigorously he cantered onward thence. In front, in rear, they sounded their trumpets. Above them all boomed the oliphant again. Then all the Franks for pity of Roland wept. That emperor canters in noble array, Over his sack all of his beard displays, For love of him or others do the same, Five score thousand Franks are thereby made plain. They pass those peaks, those rocks, and those mountains, Those terrible narrows, and those deep vales. Then issue from the passes and the wastes, Till they are come into the march of Spain. A halt they've made in the middle of a plain. To Balagant his vanguard comes again, A Sulian has told his message. We have seen Charles, that haughty sovereign, Fierce are his men, they have no mind to fail. Arm yourself then, battle you'll have to-day. Says Balagant, mine is great vassalage, Let horns this news to my pagans proclaim. Through all the host they have their drums sounded, and their bugles and very clear trumpets. Pagans dismount that they may arm themselves. Their admiral will stay no longer then, puts on a sark embroidered in the hems, laces his helm that is with gold begemmed. After his sword on his left side he set, out of his pride a name for it he spelt, like to Carlun's, as he has heard it said. So Precious he bade his own be clept, "'Twas their ensign when they to battle went, his chevaliers. "'He gave that cry to them, his own broad shield he hangs upon his neck. "'Round its gold boss a band of crystal went. "'The strap of it was a good silken web. "'He grasps his spear, the which he calls Maltet, "'so great its shaft as is a stout cudgel. "'Beneath its steel alone a mule had bent. "'On his charger as Balagant mounted, Marcules from overseas his stirrup held. That warrior with a great stride he stepped. Small were his thighs, his ribs of wide extent. Great was his breast, and finely fashioned, with shoulders broad and very clear aspect. Proud was his face, his hair was ringleted. White as a flower in summer was his head. His vassalage had often been proved. God, what a knight, were he a Christian yet! His horse he spurred, the clear blood issued. He's galloped on, over a ditch he's leapt. Full fifty feet a man might mark its breadth. Pagans cry out, our marches shall be held. There is no Frank, may once with him contest. Will he or nil, his life he'll soon have spent. Charles is mad that he departs not hence. That admiral, to a baron's like enough, White is his beard, as flowers by summer burnt. In his own laws of wisdom hath he much, And in battle he's proud and arduous. His son Malprimes is very chivalrous, He's great and strong, his ancestors were thus. Says to his sire, To canter then let us, I marvel much that soon we'll see Carlun. Says Baligant, Yea, for he's very pruff. In many tales honour to him is done. He hath no more Roland, his sister's son. He'll have no strength to stay and fight with us. Fair son Malprimes, then says to him Baligant, Was slain yestreen the good vassal Rolands, And Oliver, the proud and valiant, The dozen peers whom Charles so cherished, And twenty thousand more Frankish combatants. For all the rest I'll not unglove my hand, But the emperor is verily come back. So tells me now, my man, that Sulian. Ten great columns he set to them in their ranks. 
He is a proof man who sounds that oliphant. With a clear call he rallies his comrades. These at the head come cantering in advance. Also with them are fifteen thousand francs, young bachelors whom Charles calls infants. As many again come following that band, who will lay on with utmost arrogance. Then says Malprimes, The first blow I demand. Fair son Malprimes, says Baligant to him, I've granted you, as you have asked me this. Against the Franks go now and smite them quick, and take with you Torlo, the Persian king, and Dapamor, another king lutish. Their arrogance, if you can humble it, of my domains a slice to you I'll give, from Cheriant unto the Vale Marquis. I thank you, sire, Malprimes answers him. Going before he takes delivery, tis of that land was held by King Fleury. After that hour he never looked on it, investiture get never, nor season. That admiral canters among his hosts. After his son with his great body follows, Torlose the king and the king d'Apermont, thirty columns most speedily they form. They've chevaliers in marvellous great force, fifty thousand the smallest column holds. The first is raised of men from Bunton Roll, the next after my scenes whose heads are gross. Along their backs, above their spinal bones, as they were hogs, great bristles on them grow. The third is raised from Nubles and from Blos, the fourth is raised from Bran and from Esclavos, the fifth is raised from Sorbras and from Sores, the sixth is raised from Ermines and from Moors, the seventh is the men of Jericho, Negroes are the eighth, the ninth are men of Gros, the tenth is raised from Balid the stronghold, that is a tribe no goodwill ever shows, that admiral hath sworn the way he knows, by Mahomet, his virtues and his bones. Charles of France is mad to canter so, battle he'll have unless he take him home, no more he'll wear on his head that crown of gold. Ten great columns they marshal thereafter, of Cornelius, right ugly, is the first, who from Valfury came across country there. The next of Turks, of Persians, is the third. The fourth is raised of desperate pinceners. The fifth is raised from Soltris and Averse. The sixth is from Ormelius and Eugez. The seventh is the tribe of Samuel. The eighth is from Bruise, the ninth from Esclaves, the tenth is from Ocheont, the desert. That is a tribe, do not the Lord God serve. Of such felons you never else have heard. Hard is their hide as though it iron were. Wherefore of helm or hauberk they've no care. In the battle they're felon murderers. That admiral ten columns more reviews. The first is raised of giants from Malpruz. The next of Huns, the third a hunger crew, and from Baldis the long the fourth have trooped. The fifth is raised of men from Valpenus, the sixth is raised of tribesmen from Maruz, the seventh is from Luce and Astremunes, the eighth from Argoyles, the ninth is from Claboon, the tenth is raised of beardsmen from Valfrund. That is a tribe, no love of God e'er knew. Guest of Rancor, these thirty columns prove. Great are the hosts, their horns come sounding through. Pagans canter as men of valour should. That admiral hath great possessions. He makes them bear before him his dragon, and their standard, Tervigans and Mahons, and his image, Apollon the Felon. Ten Carnelius canter in the environs, and very loud the cry out the sermon. Let who would from our gods have garrison, serve them and pray with great affliction. Pagans a while their heads and faces on, their breasts abase, their polished helmets doff. And the Franks say, Now shall you die, gluttons. This day shall bring you vile confusion. Give warranty our God unto Calon, and in his name this victory be won. That admiral hath wisdom great indeed, his son to him and those two kings calls he. My lord's barons, beforehand canter ye, all my columns together shall you lead, but of the best I'll keep beside me three. One is of Turks, the next of Ormali, the third is the giants of Malpri, and Ocheons, they'll also stay with me, until with Charles and with the Franks they meet. 
that emperor, if he combat with me, must lose his head, cut from his shoulders clean. He may be sure not else for him's decreed. Great are the hosts and all the columns fair, no peak nor vale nor cliff between them there, thicket nor wood, nor ambush anywhere. Across the plain they see each other well, says Baligant, my pagan tribes averse, battle to see, canter ye now ahead, carries the ensign a bois of Olufern. Pagans cry out, by Preciouz they swear, and the Franks say, great hurt this day you'll get, and very loud, Monjoy, they cry again. The emperor has bid them sound trumpets, and the oliphant sounds over all its knell. The pagans say, Kalun's people are fair, battle will have, bitter and keenly set. Great is that plain, and wide is that country. Their helmets shine with gold and jewellery. Also their sarks embroidered and their shields, and the ensigns fixed on all their burnished spears, the trumpets sound, their voice is very clear, and the oliphant, its echoing music, speaks. Then the admiral, his brother, calleth he. Tis Canavius, the king of Floridi, who holds the land unto the vale Sevri. He's shown to him Carloon's ten companies, the pride of France, renowned land, you see, that emperor canters right haughtily. His bearded men are with him in the rear, over their sarks they have thrown out their beards, which are as white as driven snows that freeze. Strike us they will with lances and with spears. Battle with them will have, prolonged and keen. Never has man beheld such armies meet. Further than one might cast a rod that's peeled, goes Balagant before his companies. His reason then he's shown to them and speaks. Pagans, come on, for now I take the field. His spear in hand he brandishes and wields. Towards Kalun has turned the point of steel. Charles the Great, when he sees the admiral, and the dragon his ensign and standard, in such great strength are mustered those Arabs of that country they've covered every part, save only that whereon the emperor was. The king of France in a loud voice has called, Barons and Franks, good vassals are ye all, ye in the field have fought so great combats. See the pagans, their felons and cowards, no penny worth is there in all their laws. Though they've great hosts, my lords, what matters that? Let him go hence, who'd fail me in the attack. Next, with both spurs, he's gored his horse's flanks, and Tensendor has made four bounds thereat. Then say the Franks, This king's a good vassal. Canter, brave lord, for none of us holds back. Clear is the day, and the sun radiant. The hosts are fair, the companies are grand. The first columns are come now hand to hand. The Count Rabel and the Count Grinamans let fall the reins on their swift horses' backs, spurring in haste, then on rush all the Franks, and go to strike, each with his trenchant lance. That Count Rabel, he was a hardy knight, he pricked his horse with spurs of gold so fine. The Persian king, Tolo, he went to strike. Nor shield nor sark could such a blow abide. The golden spear his carcass passed inside. Flung down upon a little bush, he died. Then say the Franks, Lord God, be thou our guide. Charles, we must not fail. His cause is right. And Grinamon tilts with the king Lutis has broken all the flowers on his shield. Next of his sark he has undone the seam, all his ensign thrust through the carcass clean. So flings him dead, let any laugh or weep. Upon that blow the Franks cry out with heat, Strike on, baron, nor slacken in your speed. Charles in the right against the pagan breed. God sent us here his justice to complete. Pure white the horse were on Malpreme's sate, guided his course amid the press of Franks. Hour in, hour out, great blows he struck them back, and ever dead one upon others packed. Before them all has cried out Baligant, Barons, long time I fed you at my hand, ye see my son who goes on Kalun's track, and with his arms so many lords attacks. Better vassal than him I'll not demand. Go, succour him, 
each with his trenchant lance. Upon that word the pagans all advance, grim blows they strike, the slaughter's very grand, and marvellous and weighty the combat, before nor since was never such attack. Great are the hosts, the companies in pride, come touching all the breadth of either side, and the pagans do marvellously strike. So many shafts by God in pieces lie, and crumpled shields, and sarks with mail untwined. So spattered all the earth there would you find, that through the field the grass so green and fine, with men's life-blood is all vermilion dyed. That admiral rallies once more his tribe, Baron, strike on, shatter the Christian line. Now very keen and lasting is the fight, as never was before or since that time. The finish none shall reach, unless he die. That admiral to all his race appeals, Pagan, strike on, came you not therefore here? I promise you noble women and dear, I promise you honours and lands and fiefs, Answer, pagans, we must do well indeed. With mighty blows they shatter all their spears, Five score thousand swords from their scabbards leap, Slaughter them, grim and sorrowful you'd seen. Battle he saw that stood those hosts between. That emperor calls on his franks and speaks, I love you, lords, in whom I well believe. So many great battles you fought for me, Kings overthrown and kingdoms have redeemed. Guerdon I owe, I know it well indeed. My lands, my wealth, my body are yours to keep. For sons, for heirs, for brothers reek, Who in Roncevol were slaughtered yester eve. Mine is the right, ye know, gainst pagan breeds. Answer the Franks, Sire, tis the truth you speak. Twenty thousand beside him Charles leads, who with one voice have sworn him fealty. In straits of death they never will him leave. There is not one thenceforth employs his spear, but with their swords they strike in company. The battle is straightened marvellously. Across that field the bold Malprene's canters, who of the Franks hath wrought there much great damage. Names the duke right haughtily regards him, and goes to strike him like a man of valour. And of his shield breaks all the upper margin, tears both the sides of his embroidered hauberk. Through the carcass thrusts all his yellow banner, so dead among seven hundred else he casts him. King Canabeus, brother of the admiral, has pricked his horse with spurs in either flank. He's drawn his sword, whose hilt is of crystal and strikes Naaman on its helmet principle. Away from it he's broken off one half, five of the links his brand of steel hath napped. No penny worth the hood is after that. Right to the flesh he slices through the cap, one piece of it he's flung upon the land. Great was the blow. The duke amazed thereat, had fallen in, but aid from God he had. His charger's neck he clasped with both his hands. Had the pagan but once renewed the attack, then was he slain, that noble old vassal. Came there to him with succour, Charles of France. Keen anguish then he suffers, that duke names, and the pagan, to strike him, hotly hastens. Culvert, says Charles, you'll get now as you gave him. With vassalage he goes to strike that pagan, shatters his shield, against his heart he breaks it, Tears the chin-guard above his hauberk mailed, So flings him dead, his saddle shall be wasted. Bitter great grief has Charlemagne the king, Who Duke Naaman before him sees lying, On the green grass all his clear blood shedding. Then the emperor to him this counsel gives. Fair master names, canter with me to win, The glutton's dead that had you straightly pinned, Through his carcass my spear I thrust once in. Answers the duke, Sire, I believe it, this, Great proof you'll have of valour if I live. Then gauge them, then, true love and faith swearing, A thousand score of franks surround them still, Nor is there one but slaughters, strikes, and kills. Then through the field cantered that admiral, Going to strike the county Gwinneman, Against his heart his argent shield he cracked, the folds of his hauberk apart he slashed, 
Two of his ribs out of his side he hacked, so flung him dead, while still his charger ran. After he slew Gebrin and Lorraine, Richard the Old, the lord of those Normans. Presius, cry pagans, is valiant. Baron, strike on, here have we our warrant. Who then had seen those Arabic chevaliers, from Occiont, from Argoi, and from Basque, and well they strike and slaughter with their lances, but Franks, to escape they think it no great matter, on either side dead men to the earth fall crashing, till even tide tis very strong that battle. Barons of France do suffer much great damage, grief shall be there ere the two hosts be scattered. Right well they strike, both Franks and Arabies, breaking the shafts of all their burnished spears. Whoso had seen that shattering of shields, whoso had heard those shining hauberks creak, and heard those shields on iron helmets beat, whoso had seen fall down those chevaliers, and heard men groan dying upon that field, some memory of bitter pains might keep. That battle is most hard to endure, indeed. And the admiral calls upon Apollon, and Tervigan and Mahum prays and speaks. My lords and gods, I've done you much service. Your images in gold I'll fashion each. Against Carlun give me your warranty. Comes before him his dear friend Gamalfin. Evil the news he brings to him and speaks. Sir Balagans, this day in shame you're steeped, for you have lost your son, even Malprim, and Canabeus, your brother, slain is he. Fairly two Franks have got the victory. That emperor was one, as I have seen. Great limbs he has, he's every way, Marquis. White is his beard, as flowers in April. That admiral has bent his head down deep, and thereafter lowers his face and weeps. Fain would he die at once, so great his grief. He calls to him Jeanglo from over sea. Says the admiral, Jeanglo, beside me stand, for you are proof and greatly understand. Counsel from you I've ever sought to have. How seems it you, of Arabits and Franks, shall we from hence victorious go back? He answers him, Slain are you, Baligant, for from your gods you'll never have warrant. So proud is Charles, his men so valiant, never saw I a race so combatant. But call upon barons of Occiant, Turks and Unfronts, Arabits and Giants. No more delay. What must be, take in hand. That admiral has shaken out his beard, that e'en so white as thorn in blossom seems. He'll no way hide whate'er his fate may be. Then to his mouth he sets a trumpet clear, and clearly sounds so all the pagans hear. Throughout the field rally his companies. From Occiant, those men who bray and bleat, and from Agoe, who, like dogs barking, speak. Seek out the Franks with such a high folly. Break through their line, the thickest press they meet. Dead from that shock, they've seven thousand heaped. The Count Ogre no cowardice e'er knew. Better vassal hath not his sark endued. He sees the Franks, their columns broken through. So calls to him Duke Terry of Vargoon, Count Josseran and Geoffrey of Anjou, and to Caloon most proud his reason proves. Behold, pagans, and how your men they slew. Now from your head please God the crown remove, unless you strike, and vengeance on them do. And not one word to answer him he knew. They spurred in haste, their horses let run loose, and wheresoe'er they met the pagans, struck. Now very well strikes the King Charlemagne, names the Duke, also Ogre the Dane, Geoffrey d'Anjou, who that ensign displays. Exceeding proof is Don Ogre the Dane. He spares his horse and lets him run in haste. So strikes that man who the dragon displays. Both in the field before his feet he breaks, that King's ensign and dragon, both abased. Balagant sees his gonfalon disgraced, and Mahomet's standard thrown from its place. That admiral at once perceives it plain, that he is wrong, and right is Charlemagne. Pagan Arabs coyly themselves contain, that emperor calls on his Franks again. 
Say, barons, come, support me in God's name. Answer the Franks, question you make in vain, or felon he that dares not exploits brave. Passes that day, turns into vesper tide. Franks and pagans still with their swords do strike. Brave vassals they, who brought those hosts to fight. Never have they forgotten their ensigns. That admiral still precieuse doth cry. Charles Montjoy, renowned word of pride. Each the other knows by his clear voice and high. Amid the field they're both come into sight. Then, as they go, great blows on either side. They with their spears on their round targets strike and shatter them beneath their buckles wide, and all the folds of their hauberks divide, but bodies, no, wound them they never might. Broken their girths, downwards their saddles slide, both those kings fall, themselves a ground do find. Nimbly enough upon their feet they rise, most vassal-like they draw their swords outright. From this battle they'll never be turned aside, nor make an end without that one man die. A great vassal was Charles, of France the deuce, that admiral no fear nor caution knew. Those swords they had, bare from their sheaths they drew. Many great blows on shield each gave and took, the leather pierced and doubled core of wood. Down fell the nails, the buckles break in two. Still they struck on, bare in their sarks they stood. From their bright helms the light shone forth anew. Finish nor fail that battle never could, but one of them must in the wrong be proved. Says the admiral, Nay, Charles, think, I beg, and counsel take that towards me thou repent. Thou'lt slain my son, I know that very well. Most wrongfully my land thou challengest. Become my man, a fie from me thou'lt get. Come, serving me, from here to the Orient. Charles answers him, That were most vile offence. No peace nor love may I to pagan lend. Receive the law that God to us presents, Christianity, and then I'll love thee well. Serve and believe the king omnipotent. Says Baligant, Evil sermon thou sayest. They go to strike with the swords, are on their belts. In the admiral is much great virtue found. He strikes Carlan on his steel helm so brown, Has broken it and rent above his brow. Through his thick hair the sword goes glancing round, A great palm's breadth and more of flesh cuts out, So that all bare the bone is in that wound. Charles tottereth, falls nearly to the ground, God wills not he be slain or overpowered. Saint Gabriel once more to him comes down, And question him, Great king, what doest thou? Charles, hearing how that holy angel spake, had fear of death no longer, nor dismay. Remembrance and a fresh vigour he's gained. So the admiral he strikes with France's blade, his helmet breaks whereon the jewels blaze, slices his head to scatter all his brains, and down unto the white beard all his face. So he falls dead, recovers not again. Monjoy, cries Charles, that all may know the tale. Upon that word is come to him Duke Names, holds Tensender, bids mount that king so great. Pagans turn back, God wills not they remain, and Franks have all they wish, be that what may. Pagans are fled, even as the Lord God wills, chase them the Franks and the Emperor therewith, says the king then, My lords, avenge your ills, unto your heart's content do what you will, for tears this morn I saw your eyes did spill. Answer the Franks, Sir, even so we will. Then such great blows as each may strike he gives, that few escape of those remain there still. Great was the heat, the dust arose and blew. Still pagans fled and hotly Franks pursued. The chase endured from there to Saragoose. On her tower high up, Clombrami mooned. Around her there the clerks and canons stood, Of the false law, whom God ne'er loved nor knew, Orders they'd none, nor were their heads tonsured, And when she saw those Arabits confused, Aloud she cried, Give us your aid, Mahum! Our noble king conquered are all our troops, And the admiral to shameful slaughter put. When Marseille heard, 
Towards the wall he looked, wept from his eyes, and all his body stooped. So died of grief, with sins he so corrupt, the soul of him to hell live devils took. Pagans are slain, the rest are put to rout, whom Charles hath in battle overpowered. Of Saragoose the gates he's battered down, for well he knows there's no defence there now. In come his men, he occupies that town, and all that night they lie there in their power. Fierce is that king, with his hoary beard and proud, and Bramimund hath yielded up her towers. But ten ear great, and lesser fifty around, Great exploits his, whom the Lord God endows. Passes the day, the darkness is grown deep, But all the stars burn and the moon shines clear, And Saragoose is in the Emperor's keep. A thousand francs he bids seek through the streets, The synagogues and the Mahumeries, With iron moles and axes which they wield, They break the idols and all the imageries, So there remain no fraud nor falsity. That king fears God and would do his service. On water then bishops their blessings speak, and pagans bring into the baptistry. If any Charles with contradiction meet, then hanged or burned or slaughtered shall he be. Five score thousand and more are thus redeemed, very Christians, save that alone the queen, to France the deuce goes in captivity. By love the king will her conversion seek. Passes the night. The clear day opens now, of Saragoose Charles garrisons the towers. A thousand knights he's left there, fighters stout, who guard that town as bids their emperor. After, the king and all his army mount, and Bramimund, a prisoner, is bound. No harm to her, but only good he's vowed. So are they come, with joy and gladness out. They pass Nerbonne, by force and by vigour, come to Burdell, that city of high valour, Above the altar, to St. Severin endowed, Stands the Oliphant, with golden pieces bound. All the pilgrims may see it, who thither crowd, Passing Girund, in great ships there abound. Even unto Blave, he's brought his nephew down, And Oliver, his noble companion, And the archbishop, who was so wise and proud. In white coffers he bids them lay these counts, At St. Romain, so rest they in that ground. Franks them to God and to his angels vow, Charles canters on by valleys and by mounts. Not before X will he not make sojourn, Canters so far on the terrace he dismounts. When he is come into his lofty house, By messengers he seeks his judges out, Saxons, bathers, Lotherings, and Frisones, Germans he calls, and also calls Burgones, From Normandy, from Brittany, and Poitou, And those in France that are the sagest found, Thereon begins the cause of Guenelon. The emperor, returning out of Spain, arrived in France, in his chief seat at Aix. Clone to the palace, into the hall he came, was come to him there Ald, that fair dame, said to the king, Where's Rollanz the captain, who swear to me he'd have me for his mate? Then upon Charles a heavy sorrow weighed, and his eyes wept, he tore his beard again. Sister, dear friend, of a dead man you spake, I'll give you one far better in exchange, that is Lois, what further can I say? He is my son, and shall my marches take? Ald answered him, That word to me is strange. Never, please God, his angels and his saints, when Roland's dead shall I alive remain. Her colour fails at the feet of Charlemagne, she falls, She's dead. Her soul God's mercy awaits. Barons of France weep therefore and complain. Ald the fair's gone now to her rest, Yet the king thought she was but swooning then. Pity he had, our emperor, and wept, Took her in his hands, raised her from the earth again. On her shoulders her head still drooped and lent. When Charles saw that she was truly dead, Four countesses at once he summoned. To a monastery of nuns they bear her thence, All night their watch until the dawn they held, Before the altar her tomb was fashioned well, Her memory the king with honour kept. That emperor is now returned to Aix, The felon Gawain, all in his iron chains, Is in that town before the king's palace, 
Though serfs have bound him fast upon his stake, in deer-hide thongs his hands they've helpless made. With clubs and whips they trounce him well and based. He has deserved not any better fate. In bitter grief his trial there he awaits. Written it is, and in an ancient jest, how Charles called from many lands his men, assembled them at Aix in his chapelle. Holy that day, for some chief feast was held, St. Sylvester's that barons many tell. Thereon began the trial and defence of Gwenelun, who had the treason spelt. Before himself the emperor has him led. Lords and barons, Charles the king doth speak, of Gwenelun judge what the right may be. He was in the host, even in Spain with me. There of my franks a thousand score did steal, and my nephew, whom never more you'll see, and Oliver, in his pride and courtesy, and, wealth to grain, betrayed the dozen peers. Felon be I, said Gawains, ought to conceal. He did from me much gold and wealth forfeit, whence to destroy and slay him did I seek. But treason, no, I vow there's not the least. Answer the Franks, take counsel now, must we. End of verses 215 to 272verses 273 to 291 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 273 to 291. So Gwenelin, before the king there, stood, Lusty his limbs, his face of gentle hue. Were he loyal, right baron-like he'd look. He saw those Franks, and all who'd judge his doom, And by his side his thirty kinsmen knew. After he cried aloud, his voice was full, For the love of God, listen to me, barons! I was in the host beside our emperor, Service I did him there in faith and truth, Hatred of me had Roland his nephew, so he decreed death for me and Dola. Message I bear to King Marsilion, by my cunning I held myself secure. To that fight of Roland my challenge threw, to Oliver and all their comrades too. Charles heard that and his noble barons. Vengeance I get, but there's no treason proved. Answered the Franks, now go we to the moot. When Gawain sees his great cause is beginning, thirty he has around him of his kinsmen. There's one of them to whom the others listen, tis Pinabel, who in Sorrent's castle liveth. Well can he speak, soundly his reasons giving, a good vassal whose arm to fight is stiffened. Says to him Gawain's, In you my faith is fixed, save me this day from death, also from prison. Says Pinabel, Straightway you'll be delivered, is there one Frank that you to hang committeth? Let the Emperor but once together bring us. With my steel brand he shall be smartly chidden. Gawain's the Count kneels at his feet to kiss them. To the council go those of Bavier and Sax, Normans also with Poitavin and Franks. Enough there are of Tudies and Germans, those of Alverne the greatest curtsy have. From Pinabel most quietly draw back, says each to each, "'Twere well to let it stand. Leave we this cause, and of the king demand, that he cry quit with Gawain's for this act. With love and faith he'll serve him after that. Since he is dead, no more you'll see Rolands, nor any wealth nor gold may win him back. Most foolish, then, is he would do combat. There is but one agrees not to their plan. Thierry, Brother to Dongay Freights, that man. Then his barons, returning to Kalun, say to their king, Sire, we beseech of you, that you cry quits with County Gwenelun, so he may serve you still in love and truth, 
Nay, let him live, so noble a man's he proved. Roland is dead, no longer in our view, nor for no wealth may we his life renew. Then says the king, You're felons, all of you. When Charles saw that all of them did fail, deep down he bowed his head and all his face. For the grief he had, caitiff himself proclaimed. One of his knights, Thierry, before him came. Geoffrey's brother, that Duke of Anjou, famed. Lean were his limbs, and lengthy and delicate. Black was his hair, and somewhat brown his face. Was not too small, and yet was hardly great. And courteously to the Emperor he spake. Fair lord and king, do not yourself dismay. You know that I have served you many ways. By my ancestors should I this cause maintain. And if Roland was forfeited to Gawain, Still your service to him full warrant gave. Felon is Gawain, since the hour that he betrayed, And towards you is perjured and ashamed. Wherefore I judge that he be hanged and slain, His carcass flung to the dogs beside the way, As a felon who felony did make. But has he a friend that would dispute my claim, With this my sword which I have girt in place, My judgment will I warrant every way. Answer the Franks. Now very well you spake. Before the king is come now Pinabel, Great is he, strong, vassalous, and nimble, Who bears his blow has no more time to dwell, Says to him, Sire, on you this cause depends, Command therefore this noise be made an end. See Thierry here, who hath his judgment dealt, I cry him false, and will the cause contest. His dear hide glove in the king's hand he's left, says the emperor, Good pledges must I get. Thirty kinsmen offer their loyal pledge. I'll do the same for you, the king has said, until the right be shown, bids guard them well. When Thierry sees that battle shall come after, his right hand glove he offereth to Charles. That emperor by way of hostage guards it. Four benches then upon the place he marshals, Where sit them down champions of either party. Their chosen right, as the other's judgment cast them, Ogre the Dane between them made the parley. Next they demand their horses and their armour. For battle now ready you might seen them, Their well confessed, absolved, from sin set free. Masses they've heard, communion received, which offerings to those minsters they leave. Before Carlun now both the two appear. They have their spurs, are fastened on their feet. And light and strong their hauberks brightly gleam. Upon their heads they've laced their helmets clear, and girt on swords, with pure gold hilted each. And from their necks hang down their quartered shields. In their right hands they grasp their trenchant spears. At last they mount on their swift coursing steeds, Five score thousand chevaliers therefore weep, For Roland's sake pity for Thierry feel. God knows full well which way the end shall be. Down under X there is a pasture large, Which for the fight of the two barons is marked. Proof men are these, and of great vassalage, And their horses, unwearied, gallop fast. They spur them well, the reins aside they cast, With virtue great to strike each other, dart. All of their shields shatter and rend apart, their hauberks tear, the girths asunder start. The saddles slip and fall upon the grass, five score thousand weep, who that sight regard. Upon the ground are fallen both the knights, nimbly enough upon their feet they rise, nimble and strong as Pinabel and light. Each the other seeks, horses are out of mind, but with those swords whose hilts with gold are lined, Upon those helms of steel they beat and strike. Great are the blows, those helmets to divide. The chevaliers of France do much repine. O oh God, says Charles, make plain to us the right. Says Pinabel, Thierry, I pray thee, yield. I'll be thy man in love and fealty. For the pleasure my wealth I'll give to thee. But make the king with Gwenolun agree. Answers Thierry, Such counsel's not for me. 
pure felon I, if e'er I that concede, God shall this day the right show us between. Then said Thierry, Bold art thou, Pinavel, thou'rt great and strong, with body finely bred, for vassalage thy peers esteem thee well. Of this battle let us now make an end, with Charlemagne I soon will have thee friends. To Gwenelun such justice shall be dealt, day shall not dawn, but men of it will tell. Please the Lord God not so, said Pinabel. I would sustain the cause of my kindred, no mortal man is there from whom I fled. Rather I'd die than hear reproaches said. Then with their swords began to strike again, upon those helms that were with gold begemmed, into the sky the bright sparks rained and fell. It cannot be that they be sundered, nor make an end without one man be dead. He's very proof, Pinabel of Sorence. Terry he strikes on his helmet of province, leaps such a spark the grass is kindled thence, of his steel brand the point he then presents. On Thierry's brow the helmet has he wrenched, so down his face its broken halves descend. And his right cheek in flowing blood is drenched, and his hauberk over his belly rent. God's his warrant, who death from him prevents. Sees Thierry then, that in the face he struck, on grassy field runs clear his flowing blood, strikes Pinabel on his helmet brown and rough, to the nose-piece he's broken it and cut, and from his head scatters his brains in the dust, brandishes him on the sword till dead he's flung. Upon that blow is all the battle won. Franks cry aloud, God hath great virtue done, it is proved right that Gwenelun be hung, and those his kin that in his cause are come. Now that Thierry the battle fairly wins, that Emperor Charles is come to him, forty barons are in his following. Names the Duke, Ogre that Danish prince, Geoffrey d'Anjou, Wilhelm of Blave therewith. Thierry, the king takes in his arms to kiss, and wipes his face with his great marten skins. He lays them down, and others then they bring. The chevaliers most sweetly disarm him. An Arab mule they've brought, whereon he sits. With baronage and joy they bring him in. They come to X, halt and dismount therein. The punishment of the others then begins. His counts and dukes then calls to him Kalun. With these I guard, advise what shall be done. Hither they came because of Gwenelun, for Pinabel as pledges gave them up. Answer the Franks, shall not of them live one? The king commands his provost then, Basbrun, Go hang them all on the tree of cursed wood. Nay, by this beard, whose hairs are white enough, If one escape, to death and shame thou art struck. He answers him, How could I act save thus? With an hundred sergeants by force they come, Thirty of them there are, that straight are hung. Who betrays man, himself and his friends undoes. Then turned away the Bavers and Germans, and Poitevin and Bretons and Normans. For all the rest, t'was voted by the Franks, that Gawains die with marvellous great pangs. So to lead forth four stallions they bade. After, they bound his feet and both his hands. Those steeds were swift and of a temper mad, which by their heads led forward four sergeants, towards a stream that flowed amid that land. Soans fell gray into perdition black. All his sinews were strained until they snapped, and all the limbs were from his body dragged. On the green grass his clear blood gushed and ran. Gawain's is dead, a felon recreant. Who betrays man need make no boast of that. When the emperor had made his whole vengeance, he called to him the bishops out of France, those of Bavière, and also the Germans. A dame freeborn lies captive in my hands, so oft she's heard sermons and reprimands. She would fear God, and christening demands. Baptize her then, so God her soul may have. They answer him, sponsors the right demands, dames of estate and long inheritance. 
The baths at Aix great companies attract. There they baptized the Queen of Sarazans, and found for her the name of Julianne. Christian is she by very cognizance. When the emperor his justice hath achieved, his mighty wrath's abated from its heat, and Bramimund has christening received. Passes the day, the darkness is grown deep, and now that king in his vaulted chamber sleeps. Saint Gabriel is come from God and speaks. Summon the host, Charles, of thine empire. Go thou by force into the land of Bayer. King Vivian thou succour there at Imphi, in the city which pagans have besieged. The Christians there implore thee and beseech. Right loath to go, that emperor was he. God, said the king, my life is hard indeed. Tears filled his eyes, he tore his snowy beard. So ends the tale which Turold hath conceived. End of verses 273 to 291 End of the Song of Roland